Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we have once again a very special interview. It's become a bit of a tradition now at the end of RES Weekends to have an interview with the main man behind the mod, Mr. Ahal. Welcome to the channel once again. Good to be here, man. Excited, as always. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to be going through pretty much everything about the mod today and just talking to Ahal, seeing um, what's been happening with the mod, where we're going, all that sort of thing. Uh, going over, you know, the main changes, everything to do with that. And you might get some behind the scenes insight as well to uh, this sort of mod development if you ever want to become a modder or join the team yourself as well, guys. So, um, yeah, let's get going. I am just going to be playing the Day City 8 in the background. Whether I can sustain my economy or not, we shall find out. Um, but I'm just going to be playing in the background, asking questions as we talk as well. So you get a little bit of sneak preview um, gameplay as well, which is quite fun. Um, so how's the dev gone, Ahalm? Um, You know, it's gone pretty well, actually. It, uh, I was not too surprised about how this dev cycle went. Uh, compared to the last one, but uh, pretty well. And I wouldn't say we're on pace or on schedule because we've kind of abandoned uh, that uh, to yeah. avoid all the stress. But uh, it took, what, one, two, three, about five months to get this release out, um, which is fine. Yeah. Didn't overextend. So I'm very happy with the dev cycle. Yeah, good. And, you know, obviously moving away from uh, set dates as well because of the <laughs> amount of uh, stress and, and, you know, the crunch time. You know, you hear about crunch time in game companies, but it happens with mods as well, guys, if, uh, you know, if there's a release date set uh, and all that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I think that was a good decision in the end. Yeah, definitely. It's just stressful, man. We don't get paid for it, so... Um... We we are just we are just as excited to have things um, as much as the fans are, and we have goals and ambitions, and we have a vision of how we want this to be, and we're excited to put it out. And yeah, um, but it takes a lot of work. Um, there's a lot of research, there's a lot of discussion, um, and then there's the actual implementation, and then there's the constant bug fixing. Um, so. It takes a long time, and it seems that it's kind of like a curse on yourself when you are going to release it on this. Um, and it may seem perfect six months in advance, um, mm. but when there's only 30 days left, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. you can start feeling the pressure. and Like, we have 20 things that we haven't even started yet. We only have 30 <laughs> days. So, um, yeah, we're just not going to do that anymore. We're going to have more like a loose idea of when we would like to release yeah. um with like a sooner is better idea and then a later is what it is idea so it's kind of like hey we want to release in this month but you know if we do well it could be this month but most likely it'll probably extend past and be this month <laughs> yeah exactly, <laughs> but it's kind yeah. of just like more of a window <laughs> that we can operate in and not get too stressed out or or like upset if we don't hit the mark it's okay yeah, more more like we're aiming for here, but if we find something that we need to fix, then that's fine. We can push it back another couple of weeks or something like that. Correct. Stability, what we learned the most about the 0.6 release is stability is way more important than um, like quick release times. I yeah. think one of the biggest mistakes I made yeah. was in July and August saying, we're going to release 0.6 on October 27th. Um at the time, it, found, it sounded like we got plenty of time. Uh, far from the truth. I mean, most of the features that are coming in this upcoming patch uh, were planned for October 27th and never made it in. And there's other features that were also planned for the October 27th that are still not in. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, exactly. it's tough. I mean, um, we've all seen we've all seen plenty of uh, modern video games get released by AAA companies that, <laughs> that don't work when they first come out of the box as well. So, you know, the fact that you guys are doing this all for free and you know, as modders, um, and having, you know, there were there were a couple of CTD issues when the last with the last release, but predominantly stable. Um, and hopefully, this one should be really nice and stable. So, I'm looking forward to uh, 
Everyone getting their 500 turn campaigns in, which should be should be good fun. Yep. No, I am too. I mean, uh, it's not perfect. It might never be perfect, but um, as of today, uh, April 3rd, uh, we only have one issue, and it seems to be happening past turn 400-something, 500, and it's we don't know what it is. It's like a freeze but it's super clean all the way up until that. And it's very rare that people are going to play that deep. Yeah. <laughs> so um, fingers crossed that we can fix it and find it, but I'm totally content knowing that that's like our main issue right now compared to uh, between turn 50 and turn 100, having multiple CTDs, having campaigns break because of... Mm. Um, the improper coding for scripting of the emergence yeah brilliant and and uh we might as well talk about that then now so those so those bugs and ctds were predominantly caused by the emergent factions just spamming out what hundreds hundreds and hundreds of units um weren't they yeah so there was, there was yeah exactly it's not just that um there's multiple factors i think they're kind of layered so obviously yes you've hit the the, the main one that everybody kind of meant, noticed is when the emergent factions would come out, like uh, the Silesians or the Sirorian League or whatever, they would get, um, they were supposed to get like one recruitment center uh, and some money mm. to kind of help them survive and kind of get going without having to build it themselves and go bankrupt. Well, for whatever reason, the script was doing it every single so They were getting, uh, every turn they were getting a brand new recruitment Put into the building into the settlement even though they already had one which yeah. is um yeah. not game logic you can't build the same building twice so that was happening and then they were getting money upon money upon so they were just spamming out their units because they were just infinitely rich yeah and what was happening is they were just having full stacks everywhere and you know as we know like they can just bunch up and then when that happens they can't move and if a character doesn't have a way to get out of a position, um, it can cause a CTD. So it was multiple things kind of stacked up against each other. But yeah, it was kind of like a dot. And those were the main crashes that we fixed. But um, behind the scenes, we had a lot of random just crashes out of nowhere that you could then reload the campaign and start again. And it would be fine. And those were based off of pathfinding on the map. So yeah. just like a like a tile on the map not being compatible with the terrain, um, yeah. a tile on the map not allowing movement, just little tiny things that if the right character at the right time of the campaign went in the right direction, it would trigger a crash. So... Um, yeah, it, it it was those are the most I'm sure there's a lot more on the map that we'll probably have to fix, but for the most part, um, our campaigns are running super clean. Yeah, brilliant. That sounds good. And uh, like I say, you can all get ready for uh, 300, 400 turn campaigns if you want to. I mean, to be fair, I'm trying to think how long the Seleucid campaign was, but I think it was about 240 turns, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but the yeah, Epirus campaign is pretty long too. It's about 130, 140. And to be fair, that one does feel pretty finished becoming the hegemon of Greece. Like, if I was playing that on my own, I might try and take a bit of Italia and stuff as well, but it does feel pretty finished. Whereas the Seleucids felt like it felt like it could go forever on that one. <laughs> but that is in part due to the fact that I just love the Seleucids. So, uh, yeah. And the armies at the end that were there were just insane. <laughs> so, yeah, they were really fun to use. Yeah. But, um... By the but, way, I love uh, I love the scenery right now in this... Uh, yeah, this cool. Camp this little battle. A beautiful morning. If you look at the settlement plans, um, we have a new kind of like a hybrid greek barbarian settlement uh yeah, plan cool. system from town all the way through or village all the way through huge city and so the illyrians and the thracians share this and you can nice. thank exe he uh he did the strap models and the building uh and the settlement plans for the battles and it's all based on vanilla pathfinder it's just the models he, he swapped out a lot of buildings 
so yeah. you could get a hybrid look. And um, we did this just a couple of days ago, like a week ago. So yeah, <laughs> it's probably new to you. <laughs> no, it looks um, cool. But yeah, cool to cool to see it being played with. Yeah, definitely, it looks really cool. I, I wasn't expecting it to be honest, so I, that's why I was like looking in, in here, like. <laughs> It yeah. does look really nice with the uh, the little huts and also the sort of Greek Greco Roman style buildings yeah. with the red it, roofs. It, it just kind of goes like the Illyrians and the Thracians were done with O six O because they were Hellenized enough. They yeah. were very in, strongly influenced by the Greeks as well as the Celts. To mm. be fair, um, but it just seemed right to have these cultures finished if we were doing the Greek and Hellenistic world. Yeah exactly yeah. so uh should we move on to the the main focus of 0.6.4 which of course was the uh was the illyrians but was there any other sort of major things that you really wanted to focus on with the release or was it just get the illyrians done so they're ready and in the uh in the game right so the illyrians so the way we we, we the, just like behind the scenes the way you want to plan a dev cycle is you want to have something that pops out that um draws eyes right that mm. that makes it exciting if it's just a bunch of fixes and um a bunch of like behind the scenes stuff it's hard to advertise that yeah um nobody's gonna get hyped up for a bug fix video um <laughs> except for maybe the super passionate players that have been waiting for these bug fixes but um so yeah the illyrians were kind of um they were kind of in a between a rock and a hard place, really, when it came to when we were going to do them. Um, as you know, Tone is like our, our big Roman guy, and he's our lead artist, and he's been, you know, he wants to do the Romans. Yeah. And we have a huge, huge amount of people that want the Romans to be done, too. But the way I was thinking is like, okay, we just finished the Greeks, the Diadochi, and like the Thracians, and we even did the Anatolians yeah um and now we're just gonna move straight to romans well then naturally it's gonna be carthage so it felt like the illyrians were gonna be kind of jumped over and skipped yeah and all mods kind of jumped over and skipped the illyrians uh back in the day like rs2 doesn't have an illyrian faction europa barbaron doesn't have an illyrian faction um a lot of the vanilla mods like uh, extended greek mod extended cultures didn't have an illyrian faction so they were just kind of forgotten and vanilla didn't do anything for Illyria except for give it like a unit like a mercenary unit um and even to be fair the two towns in Illyria uh for the vanilla campaign are like villages yeah <laughs> so um RTR which is kind of my that's where I come from was the only mod to do Illyrians and even then they were they were done to the best that they could do. So it was just like, let's, let's make this a highlight. Like, let's make this the centerpiece of our, um, campaign, I guess this dev cycle. And we're going to make the Lyrians like nobody's ever made them before. And I don't think any R2 mods have even done something for like, like this for the Lyrians. I mean, I'm sure DEI has done a pretty good job, but we wanted to give the most in-depth, um, Illyrian culture ever seen in a PC strategy game yeah. uh, landscape. So, and we're, I, th I think we did it. I think we did. And we're not done yet. There's obviously another patch coming, but um, just for starters, to get them on the equal playing field as the Greeks and Thracians and whatnot, as your javelins do absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think the Illyrians are just as fleshed out as our Thracians and Greeks and stuff now, which is really cool. I'm really excited to see um, how yeah, they operate. Definitely. And it was like really fun for me, at least. And I'm sure a lot of people at home learning all this culture because it's such a culture that's not talked about at all. I mean, there's two main cultures really when you're talking about the ancient world, isn't there? There's the Greeks and the Romans. And then if you go a little bit further back, you're talking the Celts. So like, um, they're just not really mentioned very much, are they? So it was really cool to see, you know, you guys looking at them and, and going so in detail with them as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's the Greeks, the Romans, and the Celts. And then you got the Eastern uh, civilizations yeah. too. But um, 
when it comes to like the Thracians and Illyrians and other cultures in Europe um, that were the, kind of like their own, uh, they may be their own, but they are just by Romans, Greeks, or Celts. Yeah. Um, and even the Romans were heavily influenced by the Greeks and the Celts. So really it was the Greeks and the Celts. The Romans just kind of like stole everything and made it, made it their <laughs> own and made it better. But yeah. the Greeks and the Celts were kind of like the OGs. So um, Illyrians are, and the Thracians are both kind of like that hybrid where did, oh, okay, you killed them. I was like, I thought yeah. that was yours. But, um, <laughs> I'm hoping no, it wasn't like, mine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's it's really cool to get them in. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. and before we like go onto the Illyrians too much, let's just let's just go with the traditional question then, shall we? The the question that's been asked at all all of these uh, all of these interviews, all three. This wait, is this a third or the fourth? The third, right? This is the third, oh, I think. We did 050. We did 060. Yeah, this is third, man. Yeah. So, and the answer's been no to the last two. So let's let's ask it again. Have you managed to play the game yet? <laughs> I'm, think, I'm actually thinking this time to see if I did a legit... I think I did a legit... Yes. So I played... I could I can technically say yes. I think I played about five turns as a camp as a faction. Mm. You'll never guess who. Uh Romans? No. <laughs> uh no, I oh. mean of, of course I will I'll probably play as them when they're yeah. made. But... Are, re are you talking remastered faction? Yeah, of course, yes. Yeah, I was just thinking because I know you like Rome, so um Empor yeah, I did Emporion. Emporion. I was gonna say, was it was it the most obscure faction, <laughs> and pretty Not much the most <laughs> close to being? But <laughs> you know my love, you know my love for obscure factions, man. But yeah, yeah Emporion. Exactly. Um, I don't know what it was I was testing, but um, I took out Massalia or something like that, and I watched. A, I see when I play when the battles are. I I do strategize with the battles. But I like watching the battles. Wow, dude, gain that one. Didn't... Yeah, I know. yes. <laughs> I what mean, a plunder! Six um, six hundred and fifty nine is not too bad. <laughs> yeah, the vill these villages. But um, yeah, man, I uh, I like watching the battles. I was just kind of taking it all in. When I do play, it's just very casual. I just kind of want to experience RAS. Yeah, uh, and then by the time I get through a couple turns and maybe a battle or two, I'm like, all right, um, I need to do this, or it's time to, you know, plan this, or it's time to make this spreadsheet, or whatever it is. Hmm. Well, I guess I guess though, playing though, you get to experience it and then experience it for yourself and see like what you think needs the quickest changes or what actually needs changing, maybe stuff that you didn't think of before. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Exactly. Like, you know, actually what stopped my Emporian campaign was a CTD. Oh, right, really? Yeah, so I go from player mode to, oh, looks like I got to fix a CTD. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> Fun uh, stuff. And, uh, yeah, follow it, following that, so, you know, the team is really, really big. I mean, it's pretty much a, um, a game studio at this point. How big... Is the team like in terms of the you know the active people, and then obviously there's beta testers as well, and there's me all by myself. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but how big is yeah. the how big is the team? Uh, the team you know, now. That's a good question. I don't I don't think it's changed much from mm. 0.6. Um, we gained some people between. 0.6 in this patch mm. but we also um lost a couple yeah uh and they're kind of like on the outskirts as far as like they're helping in certain niche roles um uh we had we have we're, we're, we're kind of getting a lot of people who are able to write stuff for us yeah so we needed a lot of descriptions we still need a lot of descriptions um 
So a few people signed on and did some stuff before the holidays. Mm. But then after the holidays, they got busy. Yeah. And then within the last 30 days, we've gotten a few other people on. Um, a few people joined and within the, and then they did like a few things and within two weeks couldn't be with us anymore. Um, it's just what it is. Yeah. Um, people have lives and they, they when they join, <clears throat> they're all hyped up and wanting to help. But then something happens and then they disappear. Yeah. It's just what it is. The important thing is, is that the core team of RIS has stayed together for years now. And that's what's important to me, that our core members that work on this thing daily, that chat daily, um, that are always kind of in their in their field doing what they're doing, um, they're still here. Yeah. And those are the ones that are important to me. I'm not saying that all the others that join aren't important. I'm just thinking, like, as far as the health of the mod, future of our mod, those are the ones where it's like, if one of those people were to leave, um, it's kind of like there's a hole in the wall. Yeah. So, um, and then there's, I want to say like over a hundred signed up people, thing, but only, I want to only say like maybe 10 to 20 are active at any given time. Sometimes it's like five, sometimes in the middle of a dev cycle when we're not putting out betas, it's dead. Yeah. Um, and then there's you when you've done an amazing job on the public relations and marketing side. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's good where it's at. Sometimes you can get too many people, the more people you have, the less things get done. So I'm yeah. pretty happy with our team. To be, to be clear to everyone out there and all the other modders as well, I was saying me out by myself because I'm, I'm not a modder guys, just to be clear, <laughs> cause I do get a lot of comments from people saying, Oh, you need to do this or do that or how do you do this like in the files and stuff i can't mod i just play the game and show it to you guys so <laughs> that's why i was saying out here by myself because um i'm the only person doing that uh in terms of with the mod team if that makes sense plenty of people now are picking up ras which is really good and doing uh doing campaigns and stuff and hopefully that will continue and get bigger and bigger people uh involved in uh especially when rome comes out i think um, as well, which will be really cool. Yeah, it's <sighs> Rome's going to be the big one for sure. Yeah, I've been prepping our team for that, and uh, announcements, private messages, group chats, just letting them know that you know, technically speaking, man, the Greeks all this time, all these, these two and a half years or so working on this, mm. um, has really been prepping us for the Romans. Like for the big one. kind of figuring out what works, what, doesn't, what works well, what doesn't work well. Mm. What can we do this with the engine? What can we not do with the engine? Getting all the bugs taken care of, um, balancing, all that stuff. Like, it's kind of prepping us for the Romans because we understand how important they are. We understand how popular they are. And I'm very thankful that we didn't do them first. But if we <laughs> would have done them first, I think there would have been a lot of uh, negativity surrounding this mod. How come just because they're fighting against unremastered factions and stuff like that? or well, just multiple things, man. Multiple things. I mean, there's so many people with so many different preferences. Um, yeah, they're fighting against unremastered. They're fighting against rebels. Um, the recruitment system sucks. Um, culture doesn't seem to work properly. I'm um, just thinking like all the issues that maybe we've experienced. How come there's no AOR? Um, yeah. Just multitudes. Siege Fest. <laughs> yeah. um, you know what I mean like mm. all the issues that we have faced have been easier to maybe like take care of because there's a level of there's just like a level of uh, heightened like state when it comes to the Romans as a topic Yeah. like if you're there's going to be an issue times it by like five yeah. if it's dealing with the Romans if it's like dealing with the Greeks, it's like times it by two. Romans five. You know, if it was like the Illyrians, times it by zero because nobody would know. It's yeah. just, it's just kind of like um, how it works, man. It's just people love Rome and people want Rome to be the Rome that they have in their mind. Yeah, man. And I, if I the mod, has, yeah, if the mod has a bunch of issues, 
uh, they're turned off forever and mm. they'll never come back kind of deal. So I'm glad we didn't do the Romans. Yeah. So, but I mean, there's plenty of other stuff. There's plenty of other stuff we've added, by the way. I think I might have got sidetracked. We did a lot more than just the Illyrians. Yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll get onto that in a, a little bit. So let's just uh, let's just round off the Illyrians, and I think you've already answered why you wanted to include them, um, and why you wanted mm-hmm. to do it now. So what, like, from your perspective anyway? Because I know the historians will probably have a different answer to this, but what's so cool and yes. like special about the Illyrians um, being in the mod, or just them in general as well? Um, yeah, I'm sure the historians will have, like, Jottle did such an amazing job. I think from a historian perspective, it would be adding a new culture, adding history that's never really been known about, um, introducing people to a new culture that yeah. is just different. Um, from a gameplay perspective, I think it's the Balkans, right? And you think about even just previous versions of RIS, how there was just this big blob of rebel and you know, whatever factions in the area. So like Vanilla, Macedon would always end up at Segestica yeah. <laughs> against like the Julii or, or Dacia would get in there. Um, in our mod, it was like between the Scordisci and the RDAI. And it's kind of like just this big, huge void of rebel gray land. Yeah. Um, I think that from a pure gameplay perspective, you now have nine new factions in the vicinity to add all types of gameplay uh, and life. And as a Macedonian player, an Epirote player, you now have to worry a bit more about the North. Whereas like in your Epirus campaign, you never had to worry about the North until you tackled Macedon and had to deal with the Paeonians. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, as Epirus now, you have to deal with the Illyrian kingdom. So, uh, and then the Illyrian Kingdom, as we've heard, is one of the toughest campaigns you can play. So it, it, it adds a challenge. And then even as Rome, it enhances a Roman campaign. Um, yeah, definitely. You now have something directly to your uh, east. So yeah, I, I think it adds. And here's the thing, man. Just be honest with you guys. The Illyrians are not anything special when it comes to, like, strengths. Um, they're Oof, very, geez. I would say they're like average and with some of the factions being below average, they just weren't known for anything except for maybe like stamina, hardiness, um, ambushes, uh, Discipline. there was an Illyrian kingdom, right? Yeah. yeah they, like they, they were disciplined. But they didn't do anything like they weren't noteworthy for anything other than and stuff like that. So the units that you're gonna get with the Illyrian are not gonna be like this is the best unit in the game. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be yeah. like this is gonna be a challenge. Your unit roster is average at best. There's hardly any units, any armor, and so against fellow Illyrians, you might be okay, but uh, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, I, I so don't know. I think that's kind of like my perspective. I think there's there's plenty of armor piercing units. So I think, I think they're I think they're more powerful than than you think. Really, when you first look at the stats of some of the units, you're like, ah, oh, that's just pretty like mid tier unit. But with the armor piercing stat, you know, lots is possible. You're not going to do well against a low armored, high powered Thracian unit like the Tralians or the Romfe Foroi, but you'll right. do quite well against like. Like Greek hoplites here, like we're we're playing on very hard, very hard extreme mode, by the way, guys, as well. So, um, like these guys, I know they were surrounded, but they've hardly lost anywhere. It's these guys against like the Greek peltas are struggling. I mean, the general as well, and he's about to die, so that's good. But what do we have there? Thurio four, right? Right. Let's uh, let's see if we can. Uh... Well, I just think it's gonna at the very at the most generic broad level, it's gonna add a different level of of campaigning right yeah it's delirium have a different army structure yeah so yeah you got some ap units but your cavalry is next to nothing oh yeah that's true cavalry uh the thracians, the thracians the thracians 
have AP units too, better AP units, and they have amazing cavalry. The Illyrians have lesser than AP units with no cavalry, so they're kind of like a poor man's Sparta. <laughs> Nobody is a poor man's Sparta. Well, that, that's not my quote. That's not my quote, by the way, because I know Mosca is going to listen to this. That's that's directly from our very own Mosca Flaca. They're a poor man's Sparta. He told me that last night, and I was like, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, poor Sparta. <laughs> For all the Spartan fans. Yeah. <laughs> Just silently uh, silently crying now. Watch, um, watch all the Spartan fans are going to start playing Illyrians. Yeah. Probably, to be fair. Although no phalangites, so. Which <laughs> is good good for well, me. Well, Dardanians. <laughs> Dardanians, bro. The Dardanians yeah, were just like the Spartans. They had pikes and they, uh, they had a slave economy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, well, I guess yeah, they like to they like to raid a lot uh, as well, which is quite cool. Yeah, but, Spartans uh, didn't raid, so no. that's, there's a difference there. Oh god, this is like a disorganized rabble on this front. Come on, boys, get disciplined, <laughs> get in formation, yeah. boys. <laughs> They're all over the place. Destroyed by by javelins because that that yeah. unit has no armor. Oh dear. Oh, well, let's see if we can grab them off the town it's gonna square. Be tough to take that town. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough to take that town center. I, I mean, your axemen should help. And the, the the footmen are an infantry unit. Yeah. Um, so they should help. These spearmen are, uh, seem pretty uh, pretty. Uh, but your spearmen and your war your spearmen and your skirmishers. Um, I will say this: the the northern Illyrian skirm. I would say one of the more uh, underrated skirmisher units of the game. Yeah. So they got they got look at their melee attack. Oh, that's the city of footmen. Look at yeah. the the footmen yeah. are insane though as well. Like the footmen are, in, are probably the best peltas unit in the game. Looking at it, the only thing they don't footmen have... are an infantry. footmen are an infantry unit. Oh, okay. I would just use them as peltas. Yeah. Because <laughs> they. Oh, no, all... I know it's the unit card. Yeah. But I would probably use them like a peltas. But they're, if they're, they're not a peltas, but uh, <laughs> I probably they're, would use um... them. Right, they're precursor. Yeah, um, which is cool. Um, but yeah, no, so they're kind of like a Hustaki. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're. Oh no, that's my troops routing. I was like, they're routing, and that's my guys. Um, but anyway, before we get too distracted by the the battle, um, what faction, what Illyrian faction would you say is your uh, is your favorite then? The one you're playing right now. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> It's going to be Day City well, 8's propaganda from now on. <laughs> for those that don't, for those that don't understand, I've been trying to get Red to do the crappiest factions for um, his videos, um, and Which he's I done a few. To be fair, Paphlagonia. I did a lot of thank them. Thank <laughs> you for doing Paphlagonia. I'm begging you to do Paphlagonia. And then when you were doing the Acragus videos again and again, I was like, okay, we need more Paphlagonia videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Acragas I like... and Paphlagonia were pretty bad. Like, Paphlagonia especially was pretty darn painful. <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't for those Asian royal bodyguards that really even shouldn't be the bodyguard, you'd be yeah. screwed. But, yep. <laughs> um, I like the obscure factions, and yeah. the De Sitiates are one of the most obscure peoples. Um, I'm, glad that the, I'm glad that we added them. Um, I'm having a real good time watching you play as them and um yeah i like them because they are a the closest thing to a pannonian faction that we have yeah and um the pannonians have always fascinated me because not a lot known about them they're kind of illyrian they're kind of celtic um, hmm. they didn't do much but they're just kind of mysterious but this whole area like bosnia i don't know how to speak her Her go Herzegovina or whatever. Herzegovina. Um, Herzegovina. Okay. Herzegovina. Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, um, Slovenia, like that whole area um, has yeah. always been fascinating to me as far as ancient history because not a lot of no stuff is known. So, and Hung I guess Hungary too, right? But yeah. Um, just always kind of had a soft spot. I was really shooting to get the um but we couldn't even find a settlement 
<laughs> so um, that kind of made it hard to put them in as a faction. We kind of just used a random city for them. Um, so the next best thing was the day situates, and we were able to get two archaeological foundations with proper names, and that became a faction. Yeah, cool. And uh, yeah, they definitely seem and like. The name's cool too. Yeah, it is. Uh, they definitely do seem like one of the hardest, uh, <laughs> hardest Illyrian starts anyway. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's why we are playing them. Hopefully, this RDAI army get decides to. Um, attack this settlement rather than this one because the walls are destroyed yeah, got or this one now. that's good though yeah that's why i rushed to the coast because like there is nothing up here really it's just trash so uh i wanted rich right. settlements on, on the south have just allied issa which should hopefully keep them off our back all three of these guys in the north hopefully should be kept off our back while we deal with the rest of the rdai but Playing on very hard, we know that that's probably not going to be the case, let's be honest. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, let's end the turn there. So, um, yeah, cool. Should we move then on to the map? So, the map's what now? 1,831 settlements? Yeah, maybe like 1,832 because we have those island settlements. Yeah. Um, but yeah, about 1,830 um probably 1825 are like actually playable yeah um we have a we're have we have an ever-growing amount in the indian ocean to serve as our special function um, <laughs> some oldies bro region. yeah we're just we're just trying to keep trying to keep the uh cgs alive down there <laughs> yeah but um yeah we we've added we've added a good amount not a good amount but a like a good 15 to 20 regions this patch and you know any regions added in the future if any are going to be hard fought in the hmm. dev team because we're we're kind of with the fans i mean there's there's only you can only put so much in yeah and so it's 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 going to be like uh, uh, like oh my gosh how could we have forgotten this city or somebody's gonna have to put through like all this research give a huge reason as to why it's important um to add for us to add any more yeah. um the ones that we added were mainly due to Jottle's search in Illyria. he already discussed it in his video and you guys should check that out but um so we added a few there and then honestly i Press Jorloff and Moslos to add a few in Greece that I just felt like we needed to represent each of the regions better. When I say regions, I don't mean like Rome Total War regions. I just mean like the regions of ancient Greece. There was a few more obscure ones, to be fair, especially in Central Greece, that just we didn't put it in. And I felt like for who we are as RAS and how in depth we are, I think it was kind of like. Like a missing puzzle piece if you know what i mean yeah and it didn't feel like to me to continue without plugging that puzzle piece in so um we probably debated back and forth about two weeks um but we ended up coming to a final one there goes Masene. <laughs> yeah classic um, if you do the toggle follow war i can show you the, the yeah about real quick so jato already showed you the one that's in the lyric you're actually in the area uh that they were added so you got trigger if you put your settlement labels on so it still got triggery on right yeah. there and then um if you look at like nestos narinsopolis glindetinopolis those three were new and you go south a little bit pluri pluriopolis and then up uh At the atari Atiopolis settlement yeah the there um, we go just to your southeast yep so a lot of this was just based on research i mean jottle did an amazing job of kind of figuring out the layout of where settlements should be the dirt and then Durnion was added to so then you go into uh go into macedonia real quick so you see tripoli pelagonia there 
Uh, so that's a region. That was, like that was a. It's near Stimbara and Heraclea uh, and Pestis. Yeah. So that was a a region. Um, the Pelagonians were kind of like a barbaric people that the Macedonians conquered um, before our mod. But there was a tri city there. Yeah. So we decided to keep it. We found some archaeological data, um, and then there's a couple more. Uh, if you put the labels back on go up so ido minai there south it's north northern macedonia oh there we go yeah ido minai right there in fact so that's the northernmost province of the macedonian kingdom yeah and as you can see there's nothing really around it so we felt like that was an important add um go south a little bit towards pella so if you take the yellow off and you take the settlement labeled off, Jorloff just did this where, um, oh, I think he's going to edit it a little bit, but he, there's a, the ancient, ancient Pella was a coastal city. As you can see, there's a port there. Yeah. He just has to, I think he's just going to have to regenerate the mesh because you can see the other port city is, uh, on the coast is, should be on the coast. So that whole area, by the time it's released will be ocean. Uh, we were going to add the ancient capital of I, but I guess in this time, it literally was just tombs and huts. <laughs> so we didn't add it. But now you go into central Greece. This was the main area of work. So the rebel settlement there. In north, not that one, the other one. I don't know how to say it. Timine. Kitamine. Oh, this one, yeah. Yeah. So that's the Dolo Dolopia. So the Dolopes, Dolopians. And you can see Jorloff did a hyphen, Oitaya. So these are all ancient in the central hills of Greece. And I know majority of people are going to be like, oh, who cares? Nobody cares about this. Well, for me, again, it's like, this is what we are seeking out to do. And let's do it right. And so if it was there and we have room, let's add it. Um, there's Casso for Epirus. Mm. Um, so Casopea was a really uh, thriving Hellenistic city. You want to go north of Epirus real quick? Atena at whoop, right back down. It's a weird name, Atentinopolis. Yep. So that's part of the oh, yeah. Atentinates. And um, there's like a huge scholarly debate about them. Like they're either Epirotes or they're Illyrians or they're both. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but they were a large tribe that kind of moved around in this area. So we included them based off an archaeological site. Yeah. Um, and then if you go between Epirus and Acarnania, there's a rebel settlement there. Yeah. This called one. Argos Amphilochia. So we like that because it was an independent city and it was part of many wars between Acarnania and Ambrakia in the yeah. past. So uh, literally the Ambrakiotes and the Acarnanians would fight over this city. Mm. And Pyrrhus had it under his kingdom. And we added it because of just the playability. It kind of serves as that buffer. Yeah. Um, and it kind of helps with gameplay. And then in the central there, you were you had your mouse on it earlier. It's Tetropolis. Yeah. So Tetropolis is literally like five, I think it's four or five cities that were in this small valley, if you believe yeah. it or not. That's cool. Um, yeah. And so the Aetolians, they had just joined the Aetolian League before um, our mod started. So we wanted to include that as well. Hmm. We had a few more. We had two more in the area, but it just made pathfinding yeah. terrible. Well, and, I think um, this is going to be weren't. like Tetropolis, especially, is going to be a pretty important settlement to take between the north of Greece and the south of Greece. Like, <laughs> unless you're coming exactly. around, that's the whole... yeah, unless you're sailing around or coming through uh, in the west, um, you know, you're going to have to take that one way yeah. or the other. And if you're playing the Boeotians yeah. or something like that, or Athens, and you secure. Um, let's go to this area in Evia, Euboia, or I don't know how you say it in ancient Greek, Euboio, go Euboia. Euboia. Yeah. Euboia. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, like you can secure this area, and then if you've got Megara or Corinth, you can defend both of these pretty easily and chill for a little bit if you want to play tall, or you can you know just rebuild your armies, um, on, and then choose which way you want to go. Like if you take Tetra Tetrapolis and you go, uh, and you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to go north because the Antigonids have got a pretty strong empire there for now, so we'll mop up the rest of the Peloponnese and just defend Tetrapolis and see if the, the the ai does do a few naval invasions but you can just defend that area and it makes defense quite cool for this region so that is going to be a quite a key settlement i think um yeah it is so not only that one but the one north of it too lamia and then yeah. the ketamina those three like the central greece it makes central greece way more strategic yeah um because yeah. it's a barrier between the antigonids and the and it actually for an antigonid player it it definitely um, does a good job of effectively cutting you off from mm. your main part of the kingdom. So you have like your little about it. Um, there's no connection. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it makes things interesting. But um, if you notice, Akaya has two new cities. Yes. So they've got uh, this one's new, isn't it? Pelene. And we got Di Dima yeah. was already and Patry then Patry yeah. yeah yeah so reasoning here is there's room but the main reasoning was Akaya was just not strong enough to kind of do what we wanted it to do we want we wanted the Akayans to be kind of like one of the main players in the region yeah um, but what was happening was they were losing too easily to Ellis mm. um. So now with four cities, they're just going to be able to have more of uh, staying power in the region and be more of an active player because we have a lot of re there's reforms for them and stuff. So we kind of want, like, if you're like a, a Roman player or something and you get into mm. Greece, it'd be cool to have the, the Achaeans uh, more likely to not be like a dominant yeah. player. So yeah. we included that. And then if you want to move to the islands just just east of you, so we added a few islands too. So we added um, Iulis, which is the island of Chios. We added Andros, and then just north of it, and for the Athenian one, we added Skiros. So we'd yeah. add those three, and then go south towards Rhodes, and then go south west of Rhodes. Boom, Potidaion. Yeah, that was a really cool one. Um, I guess that that was the there was a native population on that island called the Eteo Carpathians. Mm. So, um, just again, give, gives roads a little bit more of an interesting start. Um, the, the, the campaign, if you're a Rodian or if you're a Cretan player, you know, that makes that Island way more important now than just bypassing yeah. it with your ship. <laughs> so, Gives you, yeah, a, gives, you like <laughs> gives yeah. you a staging yeah, post. Gives you a staging post between the sea, like the coasts of, and getting onto Crete without having to lose your ships. So, exactly, uh, and it's just kind of like you finish you finish the bulwark of an area, and then as you're testing it and enjoying players playing it and stuff, you kind of just like, huh, wasn't there something that we could put here? How come we didn't do anything here? It was kind of like, kind of like um, putting the finishing touches. I would say, yeah. And um, like I like how uh, Crete is just chaos right now. <laughs> That's why I said, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> nice." Um, yeah. But yeah, the Achaeans as well. Nice to see them get some extra power because they were a very significant player. And also, from a gameplay perspective, they have one of the best Greek rosters. So um, it's exactly. definitely someone you want to be powerful later game if you are invading the area, as maybe. The Romans, or or you're the Antigonids consolidating the the region. It's a good one to play against because they have a really cool roster. Um, so yeah. yeah, cool. Um, anything else you want to say on the map, or um... um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily map related, but um, you'll the players will notice, and you'll notice too, is um, in Greece and Anatolia, all regions or all cities start with a governor yeah that's been researched so a lot of these actually existed um as the governors but a lot of them as well 
were based off inscriptions mm. that Mafalos researched. So he would probably look up he would look up like the settlement or the region and he would find inscriptions of people. Yeah. And he would use those um and pick them and use those as characters. And then a lot of these characters have like their own family trees and everything. So like you're in Lycia right now, you got Ptolemy the Sun, which is like a he's part of the Ptolemaic family tree. Hmm. But if you look at the other Lycian settlements, you get like native Lycians. Yeah, like uh, not him. Yeah. Totally but Minokamis, yeah, like they have like the craziest names. Igeri, yeah. Yeah. So these guys are literally um Lycian, but then you see some Macedonian dudes uh kind of chilling as governors, right? But now mm. you're in Pamphylia, so Mopsos, Leonides, Apollodoros, like these dudes are Pamphylian. So you see Apollodoros' side side right there, he's actually legit like Pam Pamphylian, like more yeah. Anatolian. Whereas the other guys are Pamphylian Greek. Mm. So we really did a we were really focusing on characters. Yeah. And kind of diversifying um the hellenistic world like that guy's atolian yeah that you where is, on. where is he's the one next to the silesian and he's a silesian and then there's a dorian so um and if you look at their traits um I, you can't right now because you're the illyrians but for the player each of these dudes they um they they're, they're tied to like a city and that's going to we'll get into it later but that's going to be a, a feature that's expanded upon but they're either tied to a city or they're tied to a tribe now do me a favor um click on pessinus it's in it's near the galatians for the seleucids yeah uh, there we go pessinus yeah right there so yep. De deotaros he's celtic and i was able to figure out through help that you can um you can assign specific cultures uh for these characters not mm. just religion but if you look at it um his portrait yeah that's a, that's a celtic portrait and if you clicked on him as the seleucids he would sound like a barbarian yeah <laughs> the only thing is yeah we can't we can't do anything about the bodyguard but like just it's really cool that um the Seleucids now have Greek, Celtic, Persian characters. Yeah, as they did in it's real kind life. Of like how they did. Yeah, I, so I really like the Mesopotamian guys because they've got really cool names. Let's try and find one like Anu Balasu. Yeah. Yep, yeah, the Mesopotamian Babylonian stuff. I mean, and we haven't even gotten into that for again. Those are just like inscriptions. Yeah. And if you go into Egypt, there's some Egyptians in the Ptolemies. Here we go, Moscon. There you go. There's Moscon, yeah. And there's that dude's a Phoenician. Hmm. There we've got a few. So Macedonians. Yeah, we've got some Greeks. Macedon go Mainly Greeks and Macedonians. Let's go further down the Nile to find we the could... Egyptians. <laughs> few of them, yeah. There should be a couple. More. There's a lot with no go. governors right now. There it is. There's benches. Hmm. Naktenebo. Naktenebo. He's he's a historical character. Mm. Seventy years old as well. Yeah, he's an old guy. We've got a carrion here. But then look, yeah, he's a carrion. Nice. So, Mosulos did a really good job. Uh, there's a, there's a Jew. Yeah. Uh, so the Jew, the, there's a huge Jewish population in this area of the Egyptian kingdom. There's another Jew. Yeah. So, uh, really cool stuff. Um, Mosulos did an amazing job, as did Jorloff. One thing that we didn't talk about too much is the fact that um, in your videos for RS Weekends is the names have been completely overhauled. Yeah. Like, completely overhauled. All vanilla names have either been thrown out or reconstructed um, in their syllables and spelling all yeah. through research like Mosulos and others went through every single greek men's name and women's name and 
took out all the bad ones. Yeah. And then added a ton of new ones. And Jorloff too. The Thracians got a total overhaul. Yeah. So all the Thracian names are completely redone from the last game. So all these names that you're going to see here are all accurate names. Mm, that's based so cool. on inscription. Yeah, because like before, and, before like I'll, I'll just give an example. Like before, like a really easy example to give is Antigonus here used to be called Antigonus, <laughs> which is a subtle difference, but it's the Roman versus the Greek and the actual Greek, um, you know, pronunciation slash spelling. Not that it's going to make it easier for me to pronounce anything, but I'll try, guys. <laughs> no, it's just, it's really cool because in, in watching your Epirus campaign as we were doing this, I noticed all the bad names that we had thrown mm. out were popping up in the campaign that we were playing. And I just thought it was so interesting. But now they're all done correctly. We're really excited. Um, we're not done with the names altogether yet. We still have a lot of work to do when it comes to um, how factions characters get names and stuff and kind of what names, what factions have access to which names. So we're going to keep yeah. going in that. But um, we did a, it. It was just a ton of work. And one thing you should notice too, it's a very subtle thing. There's no gaps in the names anymore. So it yeah. used to be Spartacus space of Kabil. Hmm. Like there was an extra space. And so like there was this huge gap in the names that was very buggy and glitchy looking. You might not even notice it yourself. If you were to go back to like maybe an Epirus video or a Seleucid video and then look at yeah. the names as you're playing, um, you'll notice <laughs> there's like this big gap between all of the names and then the of. And that was a huge issue that we literally couldn't figure out for years. Um, yeah. Well, I found fixed, my favorite so character. Little, little detail. Huh? I found my favorite character. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I think that's awesome. Like, just it is those little details that do set the bot apart. Like, the historical details that have gone into all of these factions. Like, the characters. Like, I can't imagine the amount of amount of research Malzos has done to go through all of these regions and settlements and find actual people who govern them to put in the game. Like that is insane. Like that is just like so cool. Um, and, you know, obviously going through all of these names, cause there's not just, you know, it's not just 10 names for Greeks guys. There's tens, like maybe hundreds potentially, or at least around a hundred. Um, you're talking probably maybe even more. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got Thracian names, you've got Illyrian names, you've got Anatolian names. Um, and then as more cultures get remastered, they're all going to get added in. Yeah, Egyptian ones as well. But not just like Greek names, like Greek names and cultures for all the different Greek cultures too. So like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Super cool and we're not done yet. Um, we're trying to really... I think the huge part of RIS is just representation of all the different cultures, dialects, um, tribes, city states, just the identity. And that's going to be a huge thing that we work on in the last patch as well that we can talk about at another time. But this was just kind of like ground, like groundbreaking, not groundbreaking stuff, but kind of like the base mm. work to get these, um, characters and factions the way we wanted them yeah like as you can see there, like akaios the elder so the elder is an epithet mm. so that's a historical character but you can see the space there's like an extra space between akaios and the ah right yeah um that that's like so that's based on the trait i think and that's an easy fix mm. but it was just stuff like that that it was everywhere it was rampant yeah and for developers, it was driving us crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think that's Antiochus. Is... Maybe players don't know it, but... That's Anti is that not Antiochus' brother? I can't remember. I think so. 47, though, and Antiochus is, what, 53? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's the brother. Cool. No, that is really, um, really cool. So, um, 
Yeah, I think that's... Uh, we'll move on to a little bit more on, on characters later as well, which we'll talk about then. So, should we go on to gameplay then? Mm -hmm. So, first things first, we've talked already about the stability of the game, but we might as well reiterate it. How stable are we looking for this release? I'm assuming pretty darn stable after everything that said, and also from what the beta testers have been saying as well. Yeah, pretty darn stable. Um, some of the beta testers that have issues, it's their PCs after looking into it. So, you know, guys, really check your PCs. You know, make sure that your make sure that your SSDs or HDDs um, full enough to handle the mod. Don't be playing like with one gigabyte left on your. Um, yeah. You know, take care of your PC. Make sure you're doing things. Do your end. Um, some PCs, like lap, especially laptops, don't do well um, with such an intensive game. I think right now that you're downloading, and the map is huge, and there's a lot of factions, so it takes a lot of memory to run the game. It's just what it is. Um, I know it puts some people off, but for those that aren't put off by it, just know that your PC does need to be equipped. But with that being said, from the from the mod version or the mod side of things, yeah, I mean, we're uh, we're good. Like, like I said, there's going to be some pathfinding issues. There's that one issue where we have a hang very, 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 very late in the that we're looking into. Um, but other than that, like, you're not going to have the instability that was there in the last release. Yeah, brilliant. That's. That is so good to hear, and uh, it has been a question a lot of people have been asking, so uh, I am glad glad to hear that's really cool. Um, so in terms of gameplay, though, when we just talk about gameplay in general, what are the main changes that have happened sort of with this, uh, with this patch? Really, it's recruitment, and nothing crazy, but we cleaned it up to where you're not, if you're going to conquer a settlement in Thrace, even if it had some Greek influence, you're not going to have the Thracian and Greek AOR to choose from. You're going to have the Thracian AOR to choose from. Yeah. Let's be real. It was very cluttered. It was messy. Just, it was just a lot. So what that's Norona, right? So that's Nor yeah. Norona is a Greek settlement yeah. in Illyria. Well, hmm. It's predominantly Greek, so it's a Greek recruitment, whereas before it had Greek and Illyrian recruitment in it. Yeah. Um, AOR is a little bit different. So you get AOR tiers one through three when you conquer a settlement. Okay. But you start off with like tier four and five. So we've added another tier. Mm -hmm. Tiers one through three are AOR. Mm -hmm. Tiers four and five are factional. Yeah. But the settlements that you start with um, start with your factional troops for the most part, unless it was like a settlement that literally was kind of like a client state of yours. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> people are going to, people, including you, <laughs> have expressed a lot of frustration on how long it takes to build up your recruitment. Um, so what we've done is we've given you your recruitment. Yeah. Um, in your starting cities yeah. and you don't have to build up as much whereas when you conquer a settlement yeah you gotta start from scratch yeah so that's kind of what we've done with recruitment uh a big thing for you and other players that do it we have a script that uh destroys the recruitment centers upon conquest so i think I you're think not gonna it's... be able to destroy it for cat i think it's after turn one though right? i think it's after turn one I think it destroys them all. But I no, it doesn't. No, 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 no. It, we tried that. No, it's okay. Cool, you yeah. conquer a settlement upon the conquest of a settlement, it's destroyed. Yeah. Okay. Because AI uses it. Yeah, AI still uses it. We had tried a few other things, it didn't work. It was just too messy, too many opinions. Yeah. Back and forth all the time. So we, so we just decided to do something simple and easy to keep the game play the same but we just didn't want the players to get all that cash yeah um 
conquering settlements. It was just kind of like an ex. It was a, it. There's some exploits that should be allowed. There's other exploits where, like, this campaign is supposed to be hard but when you conquer settlement, these settlements, and you're just like destroying, destroying, destroying. It's like three thousand there, four thousand, five thousand there. Yeah. It was like okay they just went from hard to easy and it was still challenging to be fair but um Paphlogenia, it's supposed bro. to be a real challenge, <laughs> like borderline impossible um not oh you know you don't have money just go around conquer destroy these buildings and then you'll have money it was just like okay that's a little you and rain really exploited that in your you well, we had that's to where I... <laughs> yeah i was just like yeah this this is a little too easy Bro, that was not easy. <laughs> we nearly died like the first five easy episodes. <laughs> easy enough. I, I actually like the play where you you have to make the hard decision to destroy Alexandria to get Yeah. Like I'd rather you destroy buildings that No, I, I get it, I get it. Should provide you value because it's a sacrifice. It's kinda like, ooh, you know, I'm losing something here long. Yeah. Compared to this empty building that gives you nothing that you destroy for free cash. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I think I think um I agree, because it isn't really a building, it's just like your sort of recruitment capabilities in the region, right. isn't it? So you shouldn't, Right, you shouldn't be taking you shouldn't be getting gifted or taking advantage of another faction's uh idle recruitment. Yeah, exactly. So that was that was kind of the idea behind it so that's kind of like the main gameplay change um we did want to rebalance the a completely as far as factions we were not able to get to that that'll come in the next but we did completely rebalance it. i don't there's not much we can and there's no point in like showing it on the map but yeah. we did rebalance the entire uh, uh all the cg settlements and all the based on strengths and political yeah. importance so before it used to have like a ton of rebel stacks um and big cg armies and then we also tried um little little armies but then we were being told it's too easy so yeah. we we just went and you were part of this we mm. went one by one all the rebels and greek settlements that were yeah and we gave it accurate settlement sizes buildings garrisons um, yeah. to reflect how important it was and i think it makes the early game way more strategic yeah um because you know who is worth going after and who's not yeah exactly and the more valuable the, settle the more valuable the settlement the better the garrison so it's mm. kind of like you can tell it's a village because there's like maybe one yeah, exactly. Uh, so we did that, but then on top of that, no. And no. you did a video on this. We did a dang dude, Ooh, that general Jesus. Coward. The generals are getting, getting ripped. Oh, all the generals are getting destroyed. I thought we'd be able to take them then, but I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pull back. I think we're I He's think chasing gonna, you I now, gonna, dang. I think we're going to lose this, bro. Well, we do have jabbies. I won't let you focus. I don't want you to lose this. <laughs> no, I think the um, I think the uh, the balancing of all the different the different areas is is quite good because, you know, there are still some rebel settlements and cultural generic settlements that don't have any garrison because they didn't historically. So, it just makes you know taking those regions more of a decision now than it used to be because before. It wasn't really a decision whether you were going to do it or not. You kind of just ignored it and then moved on to uh, on to factions. But uh, now it's right. More right, of a, exactly. More of a big I decision. saw that a lot. In your like your guides had a big influence on that. Um, your guides were like, "Don't worry about this. This is worthless." And look how big the garrison is. Fight this army for this. And I was just like, "That's a good point." And we want to encourage players to attack rebel settlements at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so certain rebel settlements are, should be more open to taking to help you with your expansion. Um, that's kind of one of the core mechanics. We're dead. We're done. We're done. Kind of, it, are you? 
Yeah, the, dang, like, everyone. Up. If you have no armor, they have no armor. That's why. Yeah. They're, they're gen that, that's one of the challenges with the Illyrians, bro. If they're they're generals. The noble spearmen did really well there. I know they've down to twenty nine men, but they basically just ripped through the right flank, and the cavalry got absolutely ruined. So, <laughs> I think everyone needs to run. Where is everyone? Everyone, get out of here. Go. <laughs> Go. It's a different. It's a. Di a different way of playing man oh yeah definitely it's a different way of playing you can't you can't play illyrians like you could play like the the cavalry with the illyrians you just can't play them yeah like, especially uh, those Nor four northern illyrian generals they're pretty bad yeah they're axe cavalry yeah what have we got left here oh this guy's dead anyway you might as well fight what is this southern illyrian cavalry oh okay Wait, who's who's still alive? There's two units. Can you route, please? Run away! <laughs> I'd rather them, run, them route than put them on withdraw because then they're going to get chased down. Oh, you guys can withdraw. Yeah, That's man. fine. You just face the growing power of the RDA, man. They kick your oh, butt. Damn. Well, at least we'll have some money <laughs> for, right. a turn, for a turn or two. Oh, where the, what the hell are these guys doing? There we go. Oh dear. Another cursed campaign. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we could Challenge win. Challenge video, come on. I thought we could win that, but I guess absolutely not. And that unit's been fully destroyed. Um Challenge video. But yeah, in terms of in terms of the gameplay then, oof, they absolutely ruined us as well. Killed a lot more. Yeah, these spearmen did awful. The skirmishers did alright. Yeah. The Axemen, these Axemen did one for one, which is okay. The Generals did awful though as well. God. Oh dear. But yeah. Um, um, but it, for gameplay though, along with the CGs, um, I created, um, and it's not done yet, it's far from done, but I kind of created the basis of like a homeland system. Yeah. And with this homeland system combined with the CGs, um, I don't think it's going to happen like all the time, but it's just there in case it does happen. But if you're, uh, let's just say you're an Illyrian, you're, you're the De Sitiates, right? And you're, let's say you conquer the RDAI capital at yeah. Rhizon, but they're still, uh, they're still alive as a faction and Rhizon revolt because you're kind of sticking like uh, skeleton garrisons. Like, let's say you put that eight unit northern Illyrian skirmisher in yeah. eyes on and it revolts if rda is still alive it's going to go back to the rda yeah to give you that like they're not done yet with you kind of deal mm -hmm. like it's it's we need to look at like roman history and all the tribes and people they conquered but then they rose up in revolt yeah it's like one of those things where just because you conquer the settlement if it revolts it's it shouldn't revolt to like this stagnant rebel group that just yeah. wants to sit there and be left alone it's a national like revolt of no mm. we're taking back our homeland we're going to keep fighting until you kill everyone la every last one of us and you look at the roman history how many tribes of or cities of people they would rather commit suicide than fall to the romans right like they're mm. just fighting to the yeah. end and I kind of wanted that to be a feature where um, homelands are going to revolt to the faction that you're at war with because you're at war with them. It's yeah. not like, oh, I'm going to conquer the capital and it's a huge city and it's okay if it rebels. It's just going to go back to the rebels. Yeah. It's like, no, like <laughs> it's going to go back to um, the faction you just took it from. So it makes you think a little bit more before you move on. Oh, dang, yeah. they're coming for you, man. Okay. Yep. <laughs> dang, they're coming for you. Straight on the route where I'm going. You got to find a way to get your guys back to retrain, man. You have no route to go back and retrain. I think it's mercenary time, if there are any. Well, I can only afford if one unit, though. <laughs> dang, dude. Overextended. Yeah, had to though. He was losing four thousand five hundred a turn at the start. So. Yeah, this is definitely a challenge video in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge video now, bro. Died on, 
<laughs> died on the day six he hits. Oh. And your faction leader is 81, bro. Yeah. Do you have any ships? Are we are. Oh, I thought we were allied with the Dalmato. Why? Why is they, have they not allied us? Oh, probably because we attacked the RD, RDAI. If I ally and them, I can. I can move past them if I ally them. No, they're not going to accept it. Here's a map so information. You're them. Yeah. Accept or we will attack, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. We are allied with Issa, though. That doesn't help. Uh, nope. Yeah. Where's your spy at? Spy is over here. Yeah, why don't you scout that dark area out? Still got to get past uh, Delmium, though. I bet you you could take Delmium. Mm, with this, this army... <laughs> They do only have Southern Lyrian Spearmen, but where's the where's the Del yeah, Mate got... army? They it'll be in there yeah, so around here somewhere. Dang. I think we'll just try and sneak past and just say sorry for the transgression. <laughs> sneak past the RDAI army. No, can't do that. We'll die. Sixty percent. You can have the footmen, because I don't think I can retrain them. Can I? Let's have a look. No, so yeah, you can keep them. We're just going to have to go here and wait a mm. turn. But then it's going to be, oh no. Or, I mean, Issa's kind of just blocking the way. Like, it'd be nice if they weren't there. Oh, they, they're they neutral with us as well. I guess no one liked us attacking the RDAI again. Uh, Probably bad, yeah. Yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Go back. There's a village that you could take from the RDAI right there and then keep them because mm. they, they would have no interest because it's your little exploit that you like to use. Yeah. Oh. Well, I guess we... Oh, no. We're <laughs> allied to the CG. I forgot about that. Yeah. Are they neutral, though? How are they, how are they joining? They're allied to the CG. Oh, so even, even if they're neutral, they can, uh, they can do that. But you could probably still bait him off of you, off of your settlement. Yeah, honestly, it doesn't really matter if that army dies now because there's not really much we can do. So, yeah, Northern Illyrian Levy, start. it is, boys. <laughs> what can you recruit at your capital? Uh, I'm recruiting. Uh, oh no, don't want a cavalry. We need infantry now. I think the axemen are the only option, really. Like. The spearmen are okay. I mean, I'll get a spearman to hold the lines and the axemen on the flank, so that's fine. Yeah. Also, check if there's any mercs available just for quick and easy access at some point, um, but no. No. That's ah, another thing that's going to come next patch. Yeah. So, yeah, so the gameplay. <laughs> so, do yeah. you want to talk a little bit about the homeland system then as well? Um, and, and I know we've talked about it a little bit about the revolts, but there's also the homeland system where certain factions, they have homelands that are their, um, well, their homelands. <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's a really cool system. I think it is going to add quite a bit into the game. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that aren't homelands, right? They'll go to the CGs before they yeah. go to the... So... You know, again, this is taken from your videos where it's like, oh, you can just. Well, if they rebel from one of your settlements and take it over, are you really going to want to keep using that strategy? Yeah. Um, so it just kind of makes it more of a player choice. But um, for whatever reason, if it revolts from. We just. We want the rebels in the game. Just. We want it to be more dynamic than what the rebels offer, and the rebels offer nothing. They just, um, they they're yeah. an annoying brigand, yeah. and when they have a town, they like to be left alone, and they can't trade, and you're always yeah. and they don't do anything. So it's kind of like with CGs, like look right there, that CG 
is basically a rebel army, but because they're allied to the RDAI, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to take that village. So, and that's historically accurate. So the those two settlements, CG, um, were allied with the RDAI. So it's kind of like their little client states or protectorates. So it's just a really cool way. So the homelands and the CGs have more meaning, and then homelands, like I said. Your homelands also have uh, your best recruitment. So homelands are really like a, a valuable. Really? Dang. He hates you, man. Yeah, he doesn't like you. you. There you go. Well, you're playing on very hard. So yeah. very hard basically means diplomacy doesn't exist. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the biggest scam of the century, bro. Oh, I, I, okay. Whatever this was. <laughs> like, here we go. A thousand turns. Very demanding. What? <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. The biggest scam of the century is not gonna, gonna is not gonna take place. Oh no. Ooh. Well Kill him. <laughs> kill, kill him and kill him and run Oh no, you could have killed him and run away. That's true. <sighs> I didn't... If you would have killed it, for those that are listening, this is me when I watch him play. I'm like telling him, "Oh wow, never mind." The CG <laughs> coming for you. Well, I'm I'm not. Playing well, you're that. in their land. To be fair, yeah, you're in their land. So they're now, they're supposed. Now, to... Oh my! And now it comes. <laughs> this is a disaster. <laughs> Oh, absolutely... we need to get Legend of Total War in this. Yeah, this is uh Where's Legend? <laughs> I I'm pretty good at the game as well, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, this is pretty difficult. This looks like a difficult start. Not quite I'm telling you, man, not quite have... Paphlagonia, you're gonna... but You're gonna have to do another uh first campaign one with this where you're we're not letting me and the the topics that we were discussing today distract you <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, how did these guys survive bro that's pretty insane there's just no way out this way this way oh my god oh, look you, can the, you can probably take, you can might be able, oh yeah go 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 three turns <laughs> surely the settlements along it. here though it's Surely. about survival, bro. Yeah, that's true. No, there shouldn't be. Oh, wait. Can we not come through this way, though? Like, if I go... No, oh, the settlement's in the way. Yeah, but just hope Well, get up to where your spy... Just get up to where your spy is and see what you can do. Let's see. There are settlements along here, so, like... If... Yeah. I think... I think got to go, like, here... Try going to the middle and then see if you can... Yeah, no, no. Right where, like, right where there, that resource is, that iron resource. And you can't get across. Yeah. You can go on the other side of the hills there. Yeah, but then it's up to there. Mm. So I, I think the best thing is just to try <laughs> and sneak past them, sneak past the Del, Del, the Del Mate here, like there. And just hope they don't attack us. <laughs> or if they do attack us, you can withdraw and go towards yeah. your homeland. It should go north if I withdraw there, so well, we shall see. I don't need farms right now, bro. Yeah, I, need, I, I need troops. <laughs> you, attack, you attack the wrong faction. Yeah, I should have just chilled out there. Attack the RDA. But I didn't want to... These guys were both allied, so I didn't want to like attack them. Um, But yeah, along with the... Uh... <laughs> Before the uh, disaster class uh, ends, um, before the uh, with the um, homeland mechanic, there's also the empire mechanic now as well. And I'll actually show you the message from the start of the game, guys. Everyone out there, you've got this message here. So, emerging power, a fledgling kingdom or city state beginning to consolidate power, expanding its influence over neighboring territories. The empire sizes a balancing system to control the players and AI's tax income. Small factions receive tax bonuses while big factions trade their income for law and happiness bonuses. Um, so we are now like 
two to five settlements at the start of the game. So I think that's going to help out a lot of these smaller starts. Maybe not this one particularly, but <laughs> a lot of these smaller starts, isn't it? Well, look at the income you're getting right now. Yeah, I have no army, though. You wouldn't get that income without the Empire tax system. Yeah, that's true. Like, Athens so especially it, yeah, was, it, like, quite, quite a lot more. It keeps the smaller factions afloat without getting deep into the red, which mm. I think was a kind of, like, a really well-attested issue of our mod. Like, a lot of players liked that as a challenge, but I think a lot more players didn't like that because it seemed like it was just too hard. Yeah. Um, and the AI is greatly affected as well. And we don't want these factions to go in the red and do nothing. Mm. Otherwise, why did we add them? Right? Yeah. That's what the rebels do. So we, I wouldn't say we, I would really say one man actually, <laughs> uh, did this and made it to be this way. Oh, what's going to happen here? Oh, you're going to lose your settlement. Oh, you're fighting this? Okay. <laughs> Great resistance, bro. Um, but yeah, XE did it. It was re recent, um, and it's working really well. So it's a really cool mm. new feature, too. Yeah. And we'll, cool. It'll probably get worked on. It's literally like a skeleton feature. It'll get worked on and enhanced, and there'll probably be stuff added to it as things go on. Yeah, and, and like there is there is a note to say that like there's so much stuff that's work in progress, guys. It is a, the whole mod is a work in progress, so plenty of these systems are going to get you know changed, um, improved, all that sort of thing as time goes on. Um, and like specifically, we can talk about recruitment a little bit as well. I know you don't want to go into specifics, but like the whole recruitment system is getting blown up and completely changed for the next patch, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> really all I can say is yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> all I know is that we are already discussing it. Um, we already have a base plan um, that we need to discuss and kind of iron out. And then uh, by the time this patch releases, we'll have a branch on our dev. Wow, as you guys just get absolutely destroyed. Obliterate. Should have stayed on the uh, town square, but 15 casualties. It's Every all... little helps, guys. <laughs> yep. But, uh, yeah. So the whole recruitment system will be completely dismantled and made brand new. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, that's all I can really promise. I, I'm not going to get into anything specific because we haven't really tested it yet. And so I don't want to say, say something and get excited and then have it not work yeah um uh, we're gonna do a whole we're gonna finally after years of not touching it we're gonna have a mercenary system oh the reason they're not available is because we haven't coded in the region so when yeah. you're going into looking for mercenaries and there's nothing there it's because there's no code for it yeah um so that's gonna be something that we do so mercenaries and mercenaries will have another that we haven't tested yet. So yeah, um, recruitment, mercenaries, um, Greek officers yeah, uh, for models. So on the campaign and the battle map and not just Greeks, but like right now you're playing with like terrible looking ported models um for generals and captains and standard bearers and but in the future uh the next patch will provide remastered models and you know they're gonna look amazing they're the best work we've done because they're officers so they're gonna yeah. have the coolest looking armor and helmets and whatnot and then those are gonna be on the so looking forward to that uh what else are we gonna Oh, and unit descriptions. Every single remastered unit is for our next patch. Yeah. So those are really our main focuses. And then for characters, um, I t mentioned how we're, we're doing a city trait system and tribes and stuff. We're going to do, um, we're going to add like a regional system to it. Hmm. And we're going to see what we can do about 
making that more immersive and more impactful to where um, to, based on where the character is from will determine the outcome depending on where you put him as a governor. Um, yeah. If you're a Spartan and you conquer Athens and you're going to put a Spartan general to govern Athens, there might be some penalties from that. <laughs> yeah. So you can see here, this guy's Delmatic like Petronian heritage. And then he will should have the... Yeah. The trait. Oh my god, he's got a lot of traits. Um... He should be at the, it should be at the top. Very top. Just faction hair. Absolutely. So he's day 68. Yeah, day 68. And he's got the sacred sna uh, snake as well. The boy. Yeah. Well, we've run out of money, so this is all we have, boys. This is all we have. I've got nothing left. Well, I think we've got to take Narensopolis back, surely. That's the, the first thing we've got to do. The Illyrians are coming mm. as well. <sighs> We're just done as done as. There's not much we can do here. I don't think. Um, uh, we need richer land. Like this land is so poor. Issa did declare war on us, but getting back through to Issa is quite hard. And also, I don't fancy our chances against. My God, this guy looks mental. Look at him. <laughs> 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 Too influence. That's yeah. it. He's confident in defense, though. But he's he's a job's worth. He looks in, he looks insane. Look at his eyes, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he wants to go take. He wants to go take on the RDA AI. Yeah. Ooh, well. Or you could try your luck with the Iopodes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, let, let's tr try get another alliance. They want compensation. Uh, where's that spy? I don't think we're going to get back to the Iopodes, but but we need rich land. Where's the your general? The Iopodes are like you were able to get your general land. back. Yeah, yeah. You were able to get your general back. We've got a bit of an army now. When I say a bit of an army, what eight units? <laughs> well, here's the thing, man. So the lands to your north are decently fertile. You just gotta mm. develop them and build the farms. That's, don't, those don't, are those are like river valleys. Yeah, don't have the money to build anything though. Those should be pretty easy to take though, and that. you can just let them. As you get money, you can, there's a couple rebels and a couple CGs mm. up there that you can just easily take. Do I risk leaving this undefended? I think so. So guys, we have one of the big changes here, and that is a big change to all the stats. The stats now are a lot more logical and make a lot of sense. Now, these have been done very recently, so they haven't managed to get into any of the other uh, videos, so you're getting a complete exclusive uh, <laughs> exclusive site here with the, uh, the stats. And now they're a lot more, I would say, like, logical like shields bigger shields now give bigger shield stats that sort of thing spears give less attack all that sort of thing so um yeah and it's been predominantly done by you a hal hasn't it yes uh the the work itself has been done by me but mosca was an advisor and helper um he and i were on the computer for three hours last night voice chatting just mm -hmm. trying to figure out calculations of shields um and then tone has also been a great help as far as how to work um, the EDU Matic, which is cheap. Um, I think this still might be a little bit of a work in progress next. But what we did is, um, and I'm probably post screens to show the differences. What we did is we took shields um, of the hoplite style shield, the Aspis, yeah. and, and we compared them to the Thurios. But yeah. before we even got there, I did a whole rebalancing project on all the armors and shields of every single remastered unit. So all the remastered factions have all their units completely redone for armor and shield. Mm. This is because we never actually did it for these units, except for maybe a few. Yeah. I think Tone did for a good amount of the Hellenistic ones. But we were using copy-paste of other units that were not remastered for a lot of these units. And then as we were adding new Greeks and Thracians, we were using other units that were remastered, their stats for these. So just hmm. there was a lot of copy-paste and there was a lot of issues as far as like, hey, 
this unit has zero shield stats, but they carry a shield. Hey, this unit has seven armor, but they have no armor. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's not good. And we're getting closer to finishing things. So I just took it upon myself uh, with Mosca's help and Tone's help to kind of go through every single unit. And it was a process. There's an assembly sheet that artists seven different units. So there's some units, that literally, they're pretty easy. They all have helmets, they all have Lanathorus, and they all have a Thurio shield, and they all... Okay, that's the easy ones. But there's the Thurio Foray where four of them wear, Thurio, wear a line of thorax. Three of them wear a muscle curious. Three of them have boots. Four of them have sandals. Mm. Two of them have helmets that don't have cheek guards. Five of them have... Three have cloaks. Four have no cloaks. That's a lot of numbers. That's a lot of different variances. Yeah, yeah. And I needed to do the best I could to make sure that everything evened out so that the unit itself was fully represented. And that meant um, a lot of time. But what it did is you would take one unit in the sheet and you split it up into however many variants you um, And from those variants, you you then check like all the different equipment that he wears. And then based on the variants, it does an average. So if, you know, let's just say one guy was wearing a helmet with cheek guard, and that's a value of six, but yeah. then the other guy's wearing a cap, that's a value of two, you know, mm. whatever the average of that is. Um, so his, that part of his arm for like his head would be three, but then you have to add that to the body and then you have to add that to yeah. the legs and the feet. So <clears throat> it does this whole calculation for the unit stats based on the equipment. Hmm. And so with that, the shields were super important because the shields were very much kind of out of whack for a lot of units. There were units that had big, huge Aspis shields, the Thurio shields, but they were listed as having like small shields mm. or the material was wrong. So there was a ton of units that had iron, which iron wasn't very prevalent in the Greek world. So needing to change that to bronze, um, all kinds of different variables that make up the equipment. What you guys are getting is custom uh, unit stats based on the equipment that these guys are wearing. Yeah. Um, and that's all it is. There's nothing there's nothing crazy about the weapon. I only touched armor and shield, but it's completely accurate now what they're concerned. Now the second part is this. The Thurios and the Aspis were two very different shields. Uh, thank you to Jottle for explaining. But basically the sh the Aspis shield is bigger but you can't do much with it. The way yeah. they held it, you can't extend it from your body very much. Whereas the Thurio shield, you can. And the difference here is the Thurio shield is mainly made out of wood, mm. whereas the Aspis shield is, re is wood reinforced by bronze. Mm. So there's different shield sizes and different shield um, materials. And so like a hoplite, like put your cursor on the Greek hoplite, so he has a shield value of eight. So that means, and so here's the thing, even though he has the same size as maybe an epilectoi or um, an elite hoplite, we gave him quote unquote large shield to basically for the game's sake, make him weaker. So yeah. whereas a Peloponnesian hoplite so I know a Macedonian hoplite in is given a very large shield, and you see the difference eight to ten. So that's part of it. Yeah, Mac mercenary Peloponnesians ten. Yeah. So that's because of very large and large, but they're both reinforced material. So just yeah. doing subtle changes basically helped us set apart the levy and standard 
hoplites from the elite hoplites. Yeah. Whereas your royal Peltas spearmen there, um, they actually have a smaller shield. And so that's why they have eight. Now, when it comes to Thurio Foroi, it's kind of this basic. They'll have a shield of six, but a Sorakatai, if you go back to the. Yeah, so you go. The Thurio Foroi are six. Yeah, these guys have got seven. So that's the main. That's the main changes, six to seven. Not huge, but again, just showing the difference. Um, the tiers of units from an armor and shield aspect. The last thing is actually I did today. I, um, what I did is I separated infantry, spear, and hop, and I basically just made infantry, which are mainly sword, yeah, have a higher attack and a higher, higher charge um, than a spear or a hoplite. And then I gave Spear and Hoplite better defense. Yeah. Just to kind of tell the difference between a defensive and an offensive unit. Now, I'll say this just for clarity and transparency. The one thing I did not touch were weapons. Mm. Um, weapons are... For every infantry unit, there's the Copus, the Falcata, the Sika, Aya, um, the Xiphos, Z- or the, the yeah. Copus. There's all types of swords. Um, so I didn't think about that when I was doing that. I haven't touched it. It's not going to make it into this release, but the next release it probably will. And so weapons will probably be a focus, but just kind of like the ever evolving changes of our unit stats to where we can hit that sweet spot. Yeah. And we know that the units are balanced for each other and that the cultures are different enough from each other to Mm. where, um, there's uniqueness. Like Red yeah. even said when playing the Illyrians, it felt different. That's the whole goal. We yeah. want this to feel different. We don't want every battle to feel copy paste. Yeah. So doing subtle based on the culture, based on the equipment, based on the weapon, the shield is I think in the long run gonna go up. But Yeah, we just don't we don't want the we don't want the units to be copy paste of each other. We want them to be unique. Yeah, and I think um I think like in terms of the stats in general, they're not really like the the total defense and their morale and their attack is kind of the same as what you'll have seen before, but now it's spread in a better way. So you can now more effectively use your units against them because you know, oh, it's a Thorakita, so it's going to have a decent shield and decent armor rather than like like two shield stat, even though it's got a Thurius shield and and you know twenty five defense skill or something. So, um, yeah, right. I think I think it just means that you you know you can you can make more intuitive decisions and easier decisions based on what you're going to attack with which units. You know, like there's no point using a um, an armor piercing unit on like the carry and light infantry because they have no armor. Um, so stuff like that, that, uh, that'll be a lot easier to discern, I think, going into this patch, which will be, uh, really cool. Yeah. And it just basically helps you build balanced armies. Um, mm. you want to have your hoplites and spearmen to form your line, but then you're going to want to have your Thorakot- or um, Sikas or whatever yeah. to then flank your unit. And, you know, do a kind of a hammer and anvil, you know, kind of like the the Red Zed tactic where on the end. Yeah. <laughs> for that epic cavalry charge. Yeah. Masked cavalry, bro. Masked cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, even all the capes were accounted for. So capes, uh, the material of the shirts, um, whether it was short sleeve or long sleeve. Um, hats versus helmets, open helmets versus helmets that had cheek guards, mm. um, big shields, small shields, uh, wicker, wood, reinforced, a lot, boots or sandals or greaves, right? All the greaves that you need yeah. to wear. So just a lot of... Um, and then some of them had scale male armor. Some of them were... Line of thorax. Some of them were line of thorax and metal. 
Some of them had a disc curious. I mean, it was just very, very uh, huge variety yeah, <laughs> of exactly. differences here. Yeah, cool. And I think you've done a very good job. It looks really good. Um, and like, like I say, it's it's just that extra bit of ability for you guys to recognize that you know this unit doesn't have stats that it doesn't look like like you know like before there were some units with like weirdly high armor or weirdly low armor and stuff like that so it is good to see that all balanced really cool yeah exactly i'm glad it's done it was a labor of love i did yeah. not enjoy doing it <laughs> um but i'm glad it's over and i have a better understanding of the stat system and i can do more for the team and um like i said weapons is probably be the next overhaul project as we make sure that each weapon does what it needs to do and that each weapon is ranked accordingly you know yeah certain swords and weapons you know if a club is better than an axe or a club is better than a sword <laughs> you know we need to we need to make sure that's adjusted and even doing different javelin types different arrow types different sling like sling bullets yeah um lots of stuff a lot of different spearheads there's a lot of things that can be done to set apart units from each other. Mm. Well, I think you've just confirmed Thinoi Clubman 25 AP attack confirming. <laughs> Thinoi Clubman or in your future in your future campaign, the Liberni, the Liberni Pirates. Yeah, no, I, I don't think they're going to get recruited very much. <laughs> they're, they're not too good. <laughs> Well, to be fair, the Liburnian pirates, um, their upgrade or their their second their next tier would be the Liburnian marines. Yeah, they're actually good. Mm -hmm. They're own, there's and only there's only one. Axes. There's only one unit though that has more than two two armor, and it's the Liburnian three or four. And oh no, the, the general. Oh no, these the general. These, these guys do have three. <laughs> Luckily, they've got the, a decent sized shield though. The 304 Roy um, are a reform unit, so you're not going to have that right away. Yeah. Oh well, I I think the the light infantry can uh, can win the day with the Marines and the uh, Illyrian Axemen ready to go. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And we saw we just we, we've seen how glorious the Northern Illyrian spearmen are for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the greatest units that uh, ever lived or ever will do. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> fantastic well uh, i think that's everything on stats unless you want to say anything else no no i think we're good on the stats yeah cool well we'll uh, we'll see you guys back on the campaign map i think that's i think we've got to oh hello single man what do we have here oh del Mata. Hopefully they lose that. Ooh, man. <laughs> they hope, could. Hope, I mean, there's Illyrians to the north of us as well. Oof, well, this is tough. Yeah, and that so there, that, that corner, that northeast corner where the river goes down and the fog of war hits, there should be something. You don't want to get too close to the Skordisky, but yeah. there should be some evil cakes in the north. So uh, just um, to build up sorry, some farmland for you. No, you're good. Um, but as far as like the new stuff, um, yeah, man, like, and, oh, the emergent factions were a huge work too. Yeah. That was something yeah. that was gonna be in our last release, and it was, but it, we've completely cleaned it, completely made it better, and now you can play as them from the get go, which is you showed off in yeah. the video. It's really cool. Um, looking forward to see you doing things with those. That's gonna add some interest to the game. Um, yeah, Taras then, is going to uh, be. Uh, yeah, I was going to say Taras is going to be uh, going to be something else. <laughs> yeah, the Egyptian revolt was obviously something that we wanted to make sure we finished. So, and then like in that in that kind of a spirit. Uh, well, there you go, ceasefire. We will have uh, one of the focuses on the next patch will be. Uh, Seleucid and Ptolemaic civil wars. We've been putting that mm. off forever. But those are cool. tough. Yeah. That'll be really cool. 
Um, and obviously, there's a load of new characters and traits as well, isn't it? I mean, we've seen all the new characters, but there's a load more traits and ancillaries. Um, the ancillaries are all um, of the culture that they come from now as well, which I think is cool. And, you know, the trait, traits-wise, there's a lot more sort of uh, just differentiation between characters and personality, I would say, um, which is really nice to see. Yeah, Lusitania did a really good job of cleaning up the traits and ancillaries. Um, he has the hates and fears traits. And, yeah. Um, he he did a good job with getting like the the images for the ancillaries. So, yeah, we're looking forward to that as well. Yeah, definitely. I think that's going to be cool. Um, and like, it just allows you so much more extra role playing if you want to role play. Uh, and also a lot of variation between your characters now. So do be careful who you're governing with, like, and who you are putting in in armies. Don't just put anybody out there. You've got to uh, you've got to pick and choose really who you want it to be. Right, and in the future, like I said, we're going to try to make a dynamic system where, based on who your character is. Uh, there might be some great combinations. There could be some terrible combinations. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Putting a Macedonian in charge of a barbarian land, you know, maybe you need to build a building to go with that. You know, we're mm. basically just going to make it so cultures are really important to them. And identity, like just having these characters have an identity, where they're from, you know, who they're part of, yeah. what culture are they, what tribe are they from, what city, you know, do they represent, what region are they out of, stuff like that, I think is going to be really impressive for them. attaching uh, bonuses and penalties, make it better as well. Yeah, definitely. I think that's yeah. going to be cool. I think it'd be good. And uh... As the RDA are now in your homeland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think there is. I think this is doomed. Oh, there comes the Delmata, yeah. Oh, don't, wow. Don't, don't think there is any way of salvaging this. So you day, are hated. Day City 8, yeah, we are on very hard though, aren't we? So maybe I should have played hard, hard and not extreme mode for this. <laughs> well, like I said, dude, challenge video. Now, this is the challenge for us though, is to finish the interview before the faction dies. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you're just gonna have to wheel around and take the Delmate and back. I think we. I think unless you can take Splonum and you could probably take Splonum to keep yourself alive. Yeah, that's the only thing I think is to take Splonum and then turn around, attack the Delmate. Uh, how much movement have we got? Oh, we got enough to go for both actually, and they don't have very big armies. But this one does have some nice Southern Illyrian spearmen, which are a lot better than ours. Oh yeah, the Southern Illyrian roster I think is definitely a, a little bit stronger from what I've seen in the videos and stuff as well. The Northern one is a lot lighter troops with some more armor piercing maybe, but the Southern one definitely has better cavalry and better um, all that sort of thing. So um, it's interesting, but uh, yeah, so... Which emergent faction then is your favorite? Do you think? And I know what you're gonna say, so but but you say it first. I think I know what you're gonna say anyway. <laughs> um, I don't know if you're gonna know what I'm gonna say. Okay, shall I tell I, you why? I think... Really? Okay, yeah. No, I I I was definitely thinking you were gonna say Taras, but um, Taras. Yeah, I like Taras. Um. But as far as this cool factor, I like Argos. I like the symbol. I yeah. like the blue. Um, I think Taurus is cool. Um, but the one that I want you to do so badly, I know you're gonna. I know you want to do see what Taurus is, but I'm telling you, man, Megalopolis. Epic, epic cursed start, man. You're surrounded yeah. by enemies. Yeah. Uh, that's that's. That's a t that's gonna be the one of the hardest campaigns for sure. Um, same thing with my lettuce. I think my lettuce will be, or my lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's gonna be very similar to Priene. 
but harder because you don't start with so many generals. Yeah. Um, and then like the really interesting ones would be like the Crystal Orians and the Lycians. Yeah, I really like the Lycians. Um, Thessaly should be pretty cool if you wanted to play Thessaly. That's a pretty that's a pretty like low key, probably easier game. Mm. Um, and then the one that I think would be really cool, but the faction isn't finished yet, is the Silesians. Yeah, um, they're just not finished. Uh, their faction roster only has two remastered units, so we need to. They'll be finished whenever With like we focus on that area of the map, like the eastern stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But we included them just because they're pirates. <laughs> yeah, because they're cool. Yeah. yeah. So, Unfortunately, no, when they... I'm just... Go for it. No, I was going to say, when the Easterns are done, I, I'm going to be playing as Parthia straight away. <laughs> That's going to be... Oh, yeah. I'm just going to be bang, oh, Parthia. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm really excited about the Emergent Factions as a whole. I just think it adds a lot of... Yeah. Um, dynamic playability that kind of happens randomly yes. so especially like the starting as them like just, yeah i mean just starting as argos or starting as so or whatever it's just like it, they they pop that you pop up in like these really crazy spots so mm. it's kind of like a a really nice challenge for the player yeah definitely um and i i think they they just Oh, we can come through here. I didn't realize that. Stay here, boys. Stay here. <laughs> Did not realize you could come through there. Um, yeah, I just think it adds like a, an extra just dynamism, including along with the cultural generics and stuff and, you know, these guys popping out. It's going to make the map a lot more dynamic. And remember, remember, guys, like if you want the full experience of the map, you're going to have to play in the remastered areas. Um, so we're talking Illyria, Greece, Anatolia. The Diadochi to like quite a certain extent. Obviously, the Diadochi themselves are pretty, pretty done. Um, but it's just obviously the factions around them that are less done. But in general, you're gonna yeah. have to just play in these like remastered areas, which I think you should be doing because there's been so much work that's gone into this. I know there's a lot of Re Roma boos out there that only want to play Rome, but uh, <laughs> play another faction for once and see how you find it. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. You might be surprised that you might even enjoy it more than Rome. So. <laughs> <laughs> go and uh, go and experience well, a different. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a risky <laughs> statement to make, but um, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, you... man. Um, the, the Seleucids are kind of the the, the Seleucids and Egyptian and Ptolemies are the hard one because, like Egypt, we focused on, but Egypt doesn't have characters everywhere. Um. Anatolia has characters everywhere, so like a Seleucid campaign where you're fo where when you're focusing your armies in Anatolia, it's gonna be way more fun than when you're focusing in Syria, Mesopotamia, yeah. and Persia, right? Um, because there's no no there's just no uniqueness to those areas right now. Um, so the Diadochi are kind of like a mixed bag because in Greece and Anatolia, it's like yeah they're they're finished, but in like their actual homelands in Syria, Mesopotamia, and Egypt, it's kind of like half finished. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of areas where we have found like the mod is just more like half finished. Um, but that's just what it is when you're focusing on culture groups at a time, um, especially with the Diadochi, they blend in with uh, the local cultures. So I can't imagine, um, I can't wait for you to do like a Seleucid campaign when the East is fully fleshed out, where Syria, Judea, Mesopotamia, Ar Armenia, Bactria, yeah. Persia, like all those Eastern areas are done and like all the AOR and characters and cultures and everything that comes with it would make a Seleucid campaign like epic. Oh, and definitely. You, that was a good bounce back battle, man. That's a decent army you got there. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Well, <laughs> the pain has already started. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, protecting your homeland is important. So, if we'll see, this is an interesting. I'm watch, this is an interesting interview slash. Save my disaster watch. campaign. <laughs> Save my disaster campaign. Yeah. yeah. 
cannot enslave. Oh, really? You cannot I'm... enslave while all other settlements are under siege. Wow. I've genuinely never seen that because that's never happened to me before. Yeah, <laughs> oh man um well we need money so i'm yeah. sorry i'm sorry splonum <laughs> you have been exploded no, dude, i would i would i would encourage the play of destroying the buildings in splonum <laughs> yeah that's true i don't know how much money you get back from it but we're cares? not going to be recruiting from here are we so right can't destroy the walls but uh yeah no Right, and I'm leaving nothing there. <laughs> Apparently, that's the fastest way. It'll go to, go to the CG. It'll go to the CG. Hold on, it'll go to the CG. I would leave something. The levy. They might be okay because we did exterminate. Yeah, they're all right. So they're not. All right. right. They're not upset. Ooh. Okay, I'm just gonna just have, a, up here. have a look at these first. Okay. Yeah, trait increase. Affluent aristocrat. Nice. Right, Captain Led Ledrus. Led Led Legs, Southern Illyrian Levy, Southern Illyrian Spearman. Okay, there's there's like a lot of damaged units, so we've just got to I've just got to not be ke like crazy and just take it a bit slower than normal. So, which is hard to do, but mm -hmm. we we shall try. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, that's really cool on all the gameplay. I think. Obviously, when 0.6.5 comes out, like that'll be obviously the most. A lot of these areas, like really, really finished, and it'll just be balancing and little tweaks coming in the future. So that's really cool. But oh yeah, I mean, think about it. Like the new recruitment, and then a real focus on AI balancing through start. Like what they start with, we might do a bunch of settlement balancing. There could be a lot. Of yeah i mean oakland 65 so um and just yeah mechanics very mechanically driven there's not going to be like a bunch of new factions or new units we're going to be focused on it's really going to be um focusing on stuff that we've already made in this battle um yeah it's pretty cool so just just you know um yeah, it's really just fleshing it out, finishing it. I guess that's a good word for it, finishing it. Yeah. Because we all know what's coming next. And yeah. <laughs> I want this to be done well because, again, we know what's coming next, and I this is the guinea pig for the Romans. Yeah. Um, so in terms of 0. Is, point, like 6.5, then, is, is that the... Um... That's the main focus, is it getting a lot of these gameplay balancing things sorted so that you know what like what you're going to be yes. doing with the romans basically and not having to tweak the romans yeah. too much so it's, kind of a, it's kind of like a two-parter um finishing the mechanics and making what we've made more immersive but at the same time in doing so learning what can and cannot be done for when we get to the romans so the romans can be done in a smoother more fluid quicker fashion um and that it's clean so that when we release the Romans, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That sounds good. And then uh, obviously the Romans are going to be after 0.6.5, aren't they? And that is that is the big one. That yep. is the uh, the big cheese that everyone's looking forward to. Any any exactly. sneak sneak previews? You can uh, you can say anything on the Romans, or is it lip shut? <laughs> are shut man i'm sorry <laughs> to the fans that are out there um but we got nothing to show for right now we just know that we want to do them next and yeah. we know how badly them and we take that seriously and we take that seriously. i'm not going to spoil with any idea um i think i've talked long ago previous interviews either with you or terminator or andy's take like ideas yeah. and concepts so if people that have remembered those or want to um yeah i'm not gonna say anything about what we're gonna do for my mind yeah. is totally focused 6.5 and then based on 0 0.6.5 the next time that we meet on these interviews i might be able to have more of an idea of what yeah exactly but yeah, i will okay i will say this there will be plenty of red Z coming <laughs> 
in regards to the Romans. Yeah. There will be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't worry, and guys. Gonna, and actually, at sneak peek for 0.6.5, there's going to be plenty of Red Dead content regarding RAS in a different way, I'd say, than yeah. what you're used to um, between now and the next patch, which will be really interesting, and I'm super keen on it. And I'll let Red talk about that when he's ready, but... I'll just kind of throw it out there that there's going to be some new content coming. Yeah, which I also am really looking forward to because it's something personally to me that I've found really interesting uh, doing. A lot of work, a lot of a lot of love and labor, which I think is is good. But uh, yeah, um, I, I've really found them interesting anyway. Um, and you may have already seen sort of uh, some of. The things we're talking about in some of the RAS weekends. So I'll leave that as a little tidbit for you anyway. Um, but yeah, no, really mm -hmm. looking forward to it. Um, so should we uh, should we round round off with a few uh, more fun questions then, as we always tend to do? I want to get the banners on actually because I uh, can't actually see what's going on. <laughs> uh, yep. Ooh, the general's in now. Um, so, what is your favorite remastered faction, would you say, now? Um, now that, you know, there's a lot of remastered factions. There's the Illyrians, there's the Thracians, the Greeks. What is your personal favorite remastered faction? Ooh, they're withdrawing. Mm. Well, I don't know. It's a tough, it's always tough. I think you get very, I think I get very used two factions and they don't they don't strike me as like yeah. interesting anymore after you work on them so much um i'd say i definitely i mean i have to say it, it I, I do like the day situates a lot mm. um just because you're so interesting I, I i talked about that earlier but the dardanians too yeah they're really cool um and they're like more of a powerful faction um who else? Paphlagonia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, seriously, like my favorite factions, regardless, I mean, I'm a Roman fan myself. Mm. Um, so I would probably have to say that the Romans are going to be my favorite faction one. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to be excited to complete, especially the Mediterranean, right? Yeah, definitely. Carthage, all that Carthage. good stuff. Because I love the Roman Republic. The, the wars of the Roman Republic are things yeah. learned on history. And being able to recreate that um, is, would, as a campaign would be so cool. But for Greeks, I like the Achaean League. Mm. I like the Volksborn Kingdom, which isn't finished. Yeah. They literally had like two units made for them. Um, so that that'll be a really cool faction once. I like Pontus a lot. Yeah. Which again it is isn't finished. So I like the mm. like the hybrid fact. Really interesting ones. Like both Borans, Pontus. Yeah. The Achaeans yeah. are cool and I'm looking at the new one of the new things that we do in 0.6 that the Achaeans will have like a really cool as a campaign. We'll we'll see. Yeah. Um who else? I like Bactria a lot. Again, not Same. finished because like all their eastern units aren't even made yet so <clears throat> a lot of the hybrid factions massalia is cool but they but they're kind of like a cool concept and then nice job wiping out that yeah i just wanted to say as well while we're talking about these like factions honestly like i love <laughs> i love that battle i love just the feel of the illyrian battles like the lack of armor they just they just feel so different to the greek ones and i'm so used a to bit of fresh air huh? yeah i'm so used to moshing my phalangites into another line of of greek soldiers that well no ju not just that just the the feel of them as well like um when you're watching them it just l looks like you could be there watching a tribal battle from 2300 years ago do you know what i mean it's it's just really cool. It's that old, it's that it's those Britain roots in you, man. <laughs> those woad roots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
I am looking forward to You want to put on some blue, blue paint and <laughs> yeah. have a war cry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be horrend- no, horrendous on the, uh, on the video. <laughs> I might even cut it out. So if you see it, guys, you're lucky. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny. Um, I, I, I'm with you, though. I think... I'm glad. And I think the Thracians too, right? The Thracians and Illyrians yeah. are going to be able to give a different, different vibe mm. to um, players that are maybe a little tired out of a hoplite versus pike uh, warfare. Yeah. So, and again, I think the tribal stuff kind of with the light infantry and the javelins flying everywhere, it's a little bit of a precursor before the Romans, right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I'm glad you like it. That, that even, makes, that's even music the, to my ears, man. It means that we did a good job. Yeah, even the map though, with different trees and different vegetation and stuff like that. It's quite uh quite cool. And just yeah. Oh uh, Yeah. <laughs> we have a like we have we have talked about we have talked about phalangites many times, haven't we? So uh <laughs> you know my feeling on phalangites, and I think everyone on the channel does anyway. So it is nice to play some some light infantry units. I mean, my f- my favorite army st- army structures are like heavy heavy infantry backed up with shock. So kind of like similar to a Thracian roster, but um, you know, Roman rosters obviously good fun as well. Um, but second second to that, just cavalry only, like Parthian horse archers or cataphracts. Like I love that. But um, I do really enjoy the Illyrians and the Thracians as roster types. Like. You know, having to be a bit more light and sneaky and, and definitely try and flank with your armor-piercing units rather than just trying to flank with anyone <laughs> like you would with the Greeks. Um, so, yeah. Let's get... Let's... Yeah. Um, I've had... I've, I'm, I'm having a blast just watching this. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy watching your videos. And, like, this... I honestly would encourage you to keep going. Do, do a... See if you can get out of this... Um, it's pain. This is this. I didn't think it was going to be this hard. Yeah, well, I knew it was going to be a challenge. But I thought you'd have like a little kingdom by now. Um, well, we did. We did. We lost but, it all. Um, we we built it and yeah. lost it all. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! No, but, um, <laughs> the Illyrians. Oh. What are they doing, Dang. man? It's just like you have to tr- trying to find so many routes. I might, I might have to be a bit scummy and, and toggle fog of war to actually see if there's a way out. <laughs> go, for, go for it because this isn't this isn't a legit campaign. Yeah, just go for it. Like okay. d- just we we can theorize what we would do in this situation. Well, we're not going east towards the score disky. That's suicide. Um, I mean down like southeast. Like that's probably one of the options i mean the other option is taking this but then there's a risk of being attacked by that there's also going back to splonum but it's pretty worthless now um there's two settlements in the north i'm telling those are the two i was thinking of yeah this one doesn't have walls as well and also we've got suggestica which is a large town so that's probably quite rich i'm just worried about yep i'm just worried about the rda i just come in again and attacking so um you go all the way north Keep going north on your Get map. It. So right there, the one in the middle that you just passed it. This one? This no, one? south. Yes, that's your northern border for Pannonia. Yeah. The the top the top one. So so PNA, I think it's called. Yeah, it's Wallace. Yep, so so PNA. So yeah. Rota, no, so PNA with northwest, northeast of that. That if you could kind of consolidate these one, two, three, four, five, six, you have just unremastered rebel Celtic doom stacks yeah. to your north protecting you. Um That's true. And then you have that as farmland. I mean look at the if you look at the fertility. The fertility is at best medium and there's high there's a lot of high fertility yeah so you're you you could turn that to epic farm farm growth and income there um just thinking of like a strategy yeah. for a, a new campaign right going north you rather know than what? south you know, you know you know what man i'd well, be willing to play that 
I'd be willing to do that. It's the last day before release. I'd be willing to do that. <laughs> uh, well, Maybe you can record me. Yeah, send you, I'll send you this. Send you the save, and I'll I'll commentate on it like. No, a, no, 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 not like, that. I'm like talking a, like from scratch. All oh, right, yeah, like a jockey, like a jockey, like a like a jockey comment, a horse racing commentator. <laughs> yeah, you could comment on my gameplay. How about that? Yeah, I'll do it. If you do, if you if you're down, I would do it. Yeah, definitely. Um. Right, so moving okay. on to the um, to, to, to the last couple of questions before we uh, before we wrap things up, and we have we have made such progress, guys, on the uh, on the campaign. We are exactly where we started. <laughs> we have the two settlements that we had at the start, we have this pretty much the same size army. So yes, we are exactly where we started. <laughs> Lots of progress. Um, but what is your favorite new unit then that's been added? You know what really looks cool is the Epirote Phalangites or Phalangites, however you say that. Yeah. Um, we did add a couple new units, and I'll touch on them real quickly. So the Ep the Epirote Phalangites were added because, well, to put it short, because of Masalos. Yeah. Um <laughs> He. <laughs> He saw that Embrachiotes, the Embrachiote phalangites were recruitable everywhere for uh, Epirus, and he was like, they should only be available on Embrachia. Yeah. To which then, like, me, Jodl, and Mosca were like, yeah, but if we do that, they're screwed because they need that middle tier backbone phalanx, and they only have Deuteroy, mm. and they kind of suck. And so there was a unit that we had planned for Epirus um, for 050. That got scratched for whatever reason, but it was Epirote Phalangites, and we just added it back. And so Tone used, um, he used the Macamoy Epilectoi Phalangite unit as a base, yeah. and he just did a retexture yeah. for Epirote colors, and it looks so cool. Mm. Um, so that's a really cool one. Another really cool unit, it had a ton of different variants on, in it, is the, the new Cyprio Tarentine Cavalry in Cyprus. So it's cool because who knew that we could add a Cyprio unit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, so we were able to find that and add something for Cyprus. And it's kind of got like a really cool Eastern Greek vibe to it. Um, so mm. check that unit out. And then the I know I'm talking like all Greek units, but there's another <laughs> one, the Thessalian Peltas. Mm. The Thessalian Peltas, they have these hats that are metal. They wear like metal hats. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. It's like those big Greek cowboy looking hats, um, but they're metal, they're bronze. Mm. So that's another one. But for the Illyrians, I like the, um, there's a couple chain mail units for the I Iapodians. Yeah. Um, they have a sword unit. And they have an elite spear unit. Um, and then there's... There's, like, the Atari Atai units. They have, like, these these little wicker hats. Um, I thought those were really cool. The yeah. Dardanian units are cool. Yeah. They have, like, these cloth sleeves. Or, like, they have, they have like, these, like, wraps. Um, so, yeah, the Illyrians are just so... Like when you zoom in on a northern, you just see different shield sizes, different helmets. Yeah. Um, just kind of like the tribal look of a mixture of warriors in a mm. unit. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to playing uh playing one of these factions. Um. <laughs> um. So yeah. And it's not going to be the day city <laughs> Maybe not this one. <laughs> not the day city no. Um, but I think we're going to play the Laberni for the campaign, guys. So that should be uh, should be quite fun. Um, Holy crap! They are it's just it's just relentless, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's relentless. Oh, day city This this might be one of the hardest factions currently. But uh, 
I think I think that's everything really. Unless there's anything else you want to talk about. So out of the Illyrians, I think the Liberni, the RDAI, and uh, the. Those two are probably going to be the easiest. But... Whereas, like, the hardest for the Illyrians would be, obviously, our our lovely De, De Sitiate. Yeah. <laughs> Viewing um, the history will probably be pretty hard. Um, or I'd say the history would um, because they're the ones on the with nothing yeah. except for the Liberni. Like, they, if you're going to have a fun time, you got to go probably the faction that has the most settlements in the Lyrians. And then mm. if you go, I guess if, well, I guess it'd be most boring. Nah, it'd be fun to unify, oh. unify them and raid Rome, bro. Yeah. You'd have to take all of the Venetians that aren't in the game. Um, Illyrian kingdom. I have heard from multiple beta testers is very challenging. Mm. Um, once you draw Macedon and, Epirus, and then you got the Dardanians and the RDAI and the Beate, and then you have the multiple CGs around you. It's not is not a campaign. You're kind of sandwiched in a small area. So I would say the easiest would be Liberni, RDAI, and I'll throw the Delmat. Yeah. The hardest would be Illyrian Kingdom, Gaysitiates, and History. Hmm. The most interesting one would probably be the Dardani, yeah. the Dardanians. That's going to be interesting. That'll be fun, though. It could go very easy. It could, yeah, Dardania, because you got Scordisci to your north, you got the Tribali and the Drusians and Bessi to your west. I mean, your east, um, and you got the Paeonians, Mady, and then the Lette to your south. But then it's Antigonids. And then you have all the Illyrian factions to your west. Yeah. So, I mean, what way do you go? The Dardanians are an interesting one because they're surrounded, but there's opportunities, but also dangers. Yeah, everywhere. definitely. Um, and then in general, honestly, dude, my list of cursed factions would be Paphlagonia. <laughs> are um, they even... Oh, they're still alive? Go on, the boys. Oh, my God. Good. Good. They have a full stack. Too. Yeah. Somehow, so, somehow the AI has got a full stack with one with Gangra. <laughs> well, it's that empire, it's that empire system, which is really cool because look, they're kind of playing tall. Well, and also um, the fact that we're on extreme mode, probably. True, but it's good to see factions playing tall like that because, um, you know, it just adds dynamic. So, Paphlagonia, um, I would say Megalopolis. Uh, if you see, yeah, if you see Megalopolis, I mean, it's surrounded. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, I don't want to say it because of such a, such the fanboyism for it, but Acragas. Acragas. Um, it's probably, a, yeah, your crab faction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Day City Ace has taken it out on me, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, they are difficult. And then probably Taurus too. Yeah. And then um, ones that me and you have definitely talked about. Um, I'd say the Asti and the Mady. Yeah. Are they, are they Asti? The oh no, they're still alive actually. No, they're yeah. still alive. I gave them a couple extra units just to keep them alive a little bit longer. Yeah. So Asti, Mady, and then Chios. Yeah, <laughs> the boys. That's a, that's a cursed faction, man. <laughs> um, and then it, it's kind of like the history. It's kind of I think it would be boring, but as you progress in the campaign, it would be tremendously hard. Um, and no, I don't think nobody even talks about it. They're kind of forgotten. It's Trapezus. Right. Yeah. No, that's Chosen Essos. No, out near Pontus. Ah, right. Yeah, that single settlement. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> they're just like a backwater, bro. I, they'll be more prevalent when Pontus and like the Colchians yeah. and Armenia. When these settlements stuff, are but, factions. Like, but you're just surrounded by full stack rebels that are the same <laughs> army, so it's probably a really boring 
start right now, but like in the future, it'll be really interesting. Yeah, definitely. Dalata, Dalata. Those are my list of the hardest. Things. The, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest ones, I think, um, would be the Seleucids of the Ptolemies. Um, just because you can't lose. Um, yeah, it depends. Like, I think the Seleucids. Well, is... unless you want to consider city management. I mean, if you're city management, that's the toughest part. Yeah, I, I would say that some... Seleucids is pretty difficult, in but it, in a different way, if that makes sense. Like, it's not difficult. Like, you're never going to lose the campaign because you've got so many settlements, but you could lose a lot of territory and, and completely screw yourself if, if you don't play it well. So, um, but yeah, I definitely think, like, Ptolemies... The Ptolemies is, is more stable than the Seleucids, definitely, at the start. So I'd say they're, you know, pretty, pretty easy. Antigonids as well. Um, sorry, I've completely... Uh, <laughs> no, you're fine. I was going to Antigonids. Over. Yeah, but Antigonids as well. Um, Bactria, I would say, is pretty easy. So much money. Yes. All the mines. So much money. Um, I'm trying to think. The Adrissians, I think, could be easy. I think... Mm, um, nah, the, their economy is so weak at the start. Yeah, look at the Bessie. The Bessie are pretty strong there. Yeah, I think... Kabil, like, too. Kabil. Kabil nice. Yeah. I think in terms of, like... I think the Aetolians probably your strongest in central Greece, but maybe the Achaeans now. Um, yeah. Athens good. and Sparta are pretty so. difficult. Um, Epirus is okay, but if you're playing very hard, very hard extreme mode, do remember that your main enemy is the Antigonids guys, and they're going to pump out full stacks constantly. So. <laughs> and, and now you have enemies to the north in the Illyrians. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, so Epirus is probably like good a good mid tier yeah, difficulty. Epirus right now, dude. Epirus is a goner. Look at that. Look at all yeah. the full stacks of Antigonids. Oof, gosh. And Epirus is focused on a rebel settlement. <laughs> the boys. AI is gonna AI, bro. <laughs> um, I was, I was, you know who, uh, and you're gonna have to redeem yourself on this one, Bithynia. <laughs> yeah, Bithynia is pretty hard. The failed, the failed, uh, the, you know, the infamous faction guide that stopped all faction guides. Yeah, literally, because it was so painful. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, no more faction guides. After yeah, literally. The failed by Bithynia. Bithynia. Got to Bithynia, I was like, nope, not anymore. <laughs> nah, I am. That is a tough start. I am aiming to do some more, so, um, yeah, yeah. I just don't want to do Bithynia, bro. <laughs> I love their Good, roster. I love, I love their roster. I just hate their start. So that's a yeah. challenge video now. Yeah, but and I wouldn't go after Heraclea Blanca. I would. I mean, you got, you got. There's options. There's options. Yeah. The thing is, you got that huge salute. You have two huge Seleucid armies that could potentially come up to you in the beginning of the game. Yeah. Um. That's the main issue. You know, you might want to take on the Thracians or something. I think, yeah, I think the best thing is just to run away. <laughs> Get go back across from whence you came, Bithynia. <laughs> back across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I um, mean, dang, that that, yeah. that would be a good one. And then, um, yeah, I mean, as far as the unremastered factions, I really don't care. Yeah. Um, because I haven't put, none of us have put any effort into them. Mm. so um if you're if you're gonna download if you're gonna download the next patch and you're gonna start up a campaign as the Arabachi, i mean hey all the more to you uh but i don't know how that will go it'll probably be a very boring campaign compared to what it would be when we do I iberia yeah but um yeah. you think about illyria right nobody played the rdai when we didn't have it yeah remastered so it would have been a super boring campaign with a terrible unit roster that looked atrocious mm. um so i just think that's the testament to what you've been kind of saying to people is like guys play play the remastered areas play the area that we've put a ton of passion and love and work yeah. into that make it interesting um 
let this Illyrian update be that visualization of how the rest of the map is pretty much just dead. Yeah. Um, compared to how like Illyria is now. I mean, look how interesting this campaign has been for you and how challenging it is. Yeah. Um, for 0.6.3, it would have been like boring. Hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. That's my, it's kind of like my, my one plug-in for playing remastered. I get people want to play Rome, but even Roman, even the people that do play Rome, they say it's boring because you're just conquering rebel, rebel settlements everywhere. Yeah, exactly. So, and you don't have a proper italics or you don't have like a civil war coming or anything. But we don't even have the post. We don't even have like the legions in or anything. So the Roman campaign is really, it's really a shell of itself. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, that's, that's probably my take on all the factions. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, the Cretans. Anything in Crete is going to be a fun campaign, as you just yeah. showed in your Cretan 15 turn yeah. video. That's a fun campaign. I think it's a good, um, if you're a beginner at the mod, Crete is like a microcosm of the rest of the world, of the rest of the remastered world. So, like, playing as Kaidonia is probably a good way to learn the game. Um, so, yeah, I'd uh, I'd recommend playing as them and uh, seeing what seeing what you can do if you are starting up in the mod because it's not too difficult and it teaches you a lot of stuff about other factions and how to use the units and all that sort of thing so yeah i think that's a good option mm -hmm. for uh for a, a chill beginner learning campaign um definitely but i think that's everything isn't it guys uh isn't it guys isn't it a <laughs> how <laughs> yeah i think so i think i think we've covered everything so um be honest Nothing, nothing super crazy compared to the 0.6 release, mm. um, but definitely feeling a lot better about where the mod is at, stability wise and just feature wise, and really looking forward to getting onto the next patch, yeah, um, as quickly as we can, yeah. and we're gonna have so much content um, from RES coming out to you guys in the next uh, months. Uh, before the next patch and then we'll have you know a whole new season of RES weekends coming out of that. so yeah we're really excited and then the quicker we can get done with that the faster we can get onto the romans yeah and that's gonna be that's probably gonna be the craziest time of the month but it'll, it'll totally be worth it yeah definitely so but thank, thanks so much for having me i appreciate you doing this with us and doing all the videos and the interviews and really just being that flag bearer for our mod and getting people into it. And I'm glad to see that your channel is uh, big shout out to big David. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to big David, the, uh, big David, the member oh. on the channel. Um, and of course, yeah. remember guys, you can join the membership program. $1 from as little as $1 or one pound, one euro, whichever one it is, uh, on uh, if you want to support the channel some extra. Um, but yeah, thank you very much to UA Howl as well. Once again, I'm, I think I'm sure and I hope this could, this tradition continues of us doing, an, <laughs> doing an interview after each patch and each update. Uh, that shall be uh, very fun. And I am going to keep asking the, uh, the same questions. <laughs> <laughs> but getting different <laughs> answers that's the that's that's the uh that's the main thing so um yeah thank you very much and of course thank you for all the access and the help with all the videos as well um it's been really cool and i think res weekends volume two has been a success just as res weekends volume one and hopefully when we continue to do this it'll just keep growing the uh the scope in the mod and the the amount of eyeballs on the mod really and people seeing the mod and hopefully subscribing to it on steam as well Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, we want to push this game to its limits. We want this thing to be um, everything and anything that people wanted. I know there's a lot of people that have different preferences, and that's okay. Um, but we're just going to keep pushing. We're just going to keep doing things. We're going to keep making this better. Um, we're going to try to fix things as best we can fix things. And, um, you know, in time, you know, 10 years from now, you know what will RAS be, right? I I would hope that it's still played all the time. Um, just imagining all the content that would be, and the way PCs will be much stronger, and mm. um, 
SSD will be faster, you know. So I know it's a lot for some PCs right now, but, you know, I think long term, I don't think just like how Rome Total War was a lot. Yeah. PCs now. Um, just, just this being something that can come back and be played decades from now. Yeah, uh, definitely. Would be an amazing thing. So that's kind of the goal. It's a long term goal, and we're in no rush, as you can see. <laughs> um, but if you look at that, you just zoom. I'm just looking at that map in the corner and just all the colors of in Greece and the Balkans and Anatolia. Just that's that's just a small taste of what's to come. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, fantastic. Well, with those uh, those epic words, inspiring words um, to finish on, I think that's a perfect point <laughs> to uh, to finish. Um, so thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. As always, if you have enjoyed this interview, please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. Um, there is a link down below, of course, in as in all the RAS uh, videos to the RAS mod discord so if there's any questions that you do have that you think i might not be able to answer then you can go and ask in there or you can just join the community because it's a really fun uh, and vibrant community i mean there's a lot of people on there so um go and have some fun guys so thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you all again on the next video